We welcome you inside the newsroom here at WFA. Mike Leslie alongside the soccer guru that we <laughs> have here at Channel 8, Paul Livingood. We are 13-ish uh, minutes away yeah. from the worst kept secret in all of sports becoming <laughs> official. Uh, we're pretty sure... We'll wait for it to be officially announced, but we're pretty sure that yeah. AT&T Stadium will be announced as the host site for the 2026 World Cup Final. July 19th of 2026, all the eyes of the sports world will be on that building right there, AT&T Stadium, for the World Cup Final. Again, there, there are other possibilities, SoFi in, yeah. uh, in LA, MetLife Stadium in New York. You had a dark horse we were talking about before we came on the air yeah. that's uh, interesting and, and worth consideration. but. Chances are good it's going to be AT&T Stadium and it's going to be a very uh, celebratory atmosphere in Arlington very soon. Definitely. I mean, it's today's the day, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, like you said, it's the worst kept secret in sports. It's been reported on, well, I don't know, three, three, four times in the past two years. Um, ESPN twice. Um, the Sun, a publication out in uh, uh, the UK reported it as well um, and every single time these rumored reports come out we, we reach out and they're like oh no we don't know yet we don't know yet so um, if it wasn't at t Stadium I would be very shocked yeah again it has been reported multiple times over here let's not forget we're talking about a sporting event that is arguably the biggest sporting event in the entire world when it comes around yeah. every four years it's probably either the World Cup Final or the Super Bowl that's the biggest singular event yeah. in sports. And your answer to that question probably depends on where you were born. If you were <laughs> born in the U.S., you're probably more inclined anyway yeah. to say the Super Bowl. If you're born abroad, you're more inclined to probably say the World Cup Final. Yeah. That's, that's the, uh, the ballpark we're talking about here. That's the, uh, the import that we are talking about with this event. And it is going to be huge for, uh, for this region. It's going to be huge. For America, we saw the impact that the 94 World Cup yeah. had on American soccer and, and really the advent, honestly, of American soccer. Yeah. Um, now here we are 32 years later, and it has blossomed in an, in an enormous way to the point where Jerry Jones wants to have the World Cup final at his stadium. Definitely. I mean, like you said, you know, 94, um, it was the first time the United States ever hosted the World Cup. It was led by uh, Lamar Hunt, one of the founding fathers of soccer. Um, in America, and now his son, Dan Hunt, leads this uh, regime of the Dallas Sports Committee. And uh, so that's a really cool full circle moment for him because, you know, he's a little kid uh, when that World Cup came around and got to see it grow and soccer grow in America after the World Cup. And, you know, the World Cup um, kind of birthed the MLS, uh, so to speak, and um, his dad was at the forefront of that. And so now, um, he, like 30 years later, it's coming back. So. So let's set the table for you because we are about 10 minutes away from the official announcement show going live at 2 o'clock. Let's rewind a little bit for you. Let's bring you back to 1994 and the first time the FIFA World Cup was held here in the States. The Cotton Bowl played a major role in that for sure. Chris Sadegi from our Daybreak team went back and looked at what 1994 was like. The summer of 1994, when Dallas welcomed the world. It has been great. I mean, the hospitality here at Dallas. We introduced them to... Well, I don't know what they let cowboys do. And they introduced us to... A summer FC Dallas president, Dan Hunt, won't forget. It was transformative. There was, there was no bigger defining moment in soccer in this country. Major League Soccer and FC Dallas were born from that 94 World Cup. Today on a street called World Cup Way, next to 17 youth soccer fields, and in a stadium connected to the National Soccer Hall of Fame, Hunt recalls the 94 Cup wasn't a hit right away. America really wasn't ready. The 94 World Cup is credited with bringing a youth soccer boom and eventually helping build stadiums like this one. But rewinding back through our archives, we found that North Texas was a little distracted. The Cowboys had new rings and a new coach. The Rangers had a new park. That's why Dallas picked me so high. And the Mavericks had a new kid. And though the world knew it was a big deal, local fans and media, not as much. It did not fill up for the first of six games to be played in Dallas. It was a novel thing. It wasn't understood by mo most Americans. But a generation of soccer fields, facilities, and players later, we understand now what's coming in 2026. It will be the most financially successful of all time. 
So this time, don't expect empty seats. In Frisco, I'm Chris Sadegi. You know, there will be no empty seats this time around. That is no. for sure. I mean, the, the way that soccer has grown in this country over the course of the last 32 years since that night, I guess it's 30 years right now. I'm already fast forwarding like it is 2026. <laughs> 30 years since 1994. Um, the way that we have seen this sport grow in this country has been remarkable. I know for, for you, I think you were saying earlier before we came on the air, you were two years old in 94 <laughs> when they had the World Cup here uh, yeah. back in the early 90s. I was seven myself. I, I don't have huge I, I remember but only just kind of vaguely yeah. I do remember though MLS becoming a thing and, and yeah. how that was kind of grown out of that moment and how uh, soccer did begin to finally really at least uh, seize something of a foothold in this country uh, but we talked about the the World Cup final being obviously what everybody's talking about right now and, and it's the biggest match that yeah. there could be so of course that's going to draw a lot of the attention there are multiple possibilities, though, and, and AT&T Stadium is figuring to get several games here. Yeah, I mean, that's the um, whole th crux of it is, you know, all the eyes are on the final, but there's potential. They're looking to host, you know, six, seven, eight um, games, each equivalent to the economic impact of a Super Bowl um, for each one of them. And so, I mean, just looking at the past uh, World Cups that have been um, around, the the final has either also hosted a semi, also hosted a opening match. Um, some of in some cases they've hosted the third place match as well. Um, so it's not just the final; it's also hosting these other big matches in the um, in the knockout stages as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk through some of the other possibilities again. It, it will be a rather seismic shock if it's not AT&T Stadium for the final. Mm -hmm. But SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles certainly a contender. Brand new, beautiful building in LA. MetLife Stadium, the home of the New York Giants and New York Jets, a contender as well. And take the fans at home through. You were talking with me earlier before we came on the air about a possibility in Mexico that would be maybe that there would be some uh, some sentimentality to bringing it to Estadio Azteca. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I could see if there were a crazy headline to be put out there, mm. um, this would be the first stadium in World Cup history to host three World Cup final matches. Um, Azteca also hosted when um, Mexico hosted in, there was once in the 80s, um, where did it go? Uh, 1970 and 1986. And so each time that they hosted um, the World Cup final, then the final was at Azteca. So, I mean, mm. if there were a dark horse um, stadium to do that, I would expect that one to be the one that they would name. You got to imagine at the very least, Aztec is going to get a high-level game, a, a, a big, pro, a high-profile game, just to be able to draw everybody's memory back to those moments in, in the '70s and '80s. Definitely. Um, potentially a semifinal as well. Potentially yeah. the opening match. You were walking me through. There have been a number of World Cups where there have been examples where the host site for the World Cup final also hosted the opening match, also hosted mm -hmm. a semifinal, maybe hosted all three. Yeah. There's a possibility that uh, the eyeballs are on AT&T Stadium multiple times over for some of the biggest and most high-profile matches, not just the final. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just written down in my notes, I have, you know, when it was in Russia, the final uh, match there hosted all three, mm. semifinal, final, opening match. Um, you have, um, when it was in Germany, the uh, Johannesburg, they uh, also had um, the final and the opening match. So, I mean, there's a potential to have all the, and also with the opening match, you get to host the opening ceremony. So that's a big deal as well. And that just brings another uh, bit of pageantry to whatever stadium um, gets that honor as well. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a stadium in AT&T Stadium that is going through already just in the last couple of weeks. The Cowboys did them a favor by finishing their season early and letting them get rampant on the, uh, uh, on the renovations to AT&T Stadium yeah. as early as possible. $295 million worth of renovations being done to that building over the course of the lead up to the World Cup. They are expecting significant changes to that building being necessary, including raising the field level. Yeah. The, every time I see a story about it, it's a different height. Sometimes it's four to six feet. Sometimes it's 15 to 20 feet. I, they haven't really fully sorted <laughs> yeah. this out yet, but they're going to have to raise it somewhat to be able to have the necessary width for a FIFA pitch. Yes, exactly. I mean, so the way that I understand it is, is that for matches that uh, they, they host, like international matches, the way that they've done it, in the past is that they just lay natural grass on top of like a, uh, you know, on top of concrete. And that's um, given players uh, injury um, mm. 
um, worries and everything. And then so not only that, but if the way if you look at the way the AT and T Stadium is constructed, you have those little sweet boxes like on the on the field. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have the ability to use the whole field like other stadiums do. And so the, I I don't know that for a fact, but that like common sense tells me that that's why they want to raise the pitch to make those dimensions is because you can't physically take those um, those suites out. And so raising the pitch and, and um, 15 feet is is pretty gnarly. The, the, the pictures that have come out. Because they've posted uh, a photo of it's like just the corner flag, mm -hmm. and it just looks so weird to have like, like a raised uh, surface on top of the the turf that's mm -hmm. there. So it, I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to see. It is going to be rather expensive to make all of that yeah. happen. I've seen a lot of different uh, potential sources of that money. Um, a fund across the state of Texas that helps to bring events like this to uh, to the Lone Star State being part of who will be responsible for or will help with uh, funding that yeah. effort to get them to the point where this stadium can host a World Cup level match and have the field be wide enough. Um, but that just goes to the commitment that is there yeah. from this group, from Monica Paul, the Dallas Sports Commission, Dan Hunt, who's uh, the son of Lamar Hunt, the Joneses, very, uh, <laughs> uh, the Jones family for sure. Um, the, the commitment that they have to make this happen, to bring this to fruition, to they certainly hope bring the World Cup final here to DFW, they're putting a lot into it. We have a crew there at AT&T Stadium as they are awaiting this announcement. It is, let's see, right now 158. So we're about two minutes away from the beginning of all of these announcements coming down. And our Matt Houston is standing by at AT&T Stadium as they are ready to erupt with excitement there in Arlington. Matt? They are. They're very excited to get this going. This has been a long process with uh, years of work put into it. Uh, a little bit about what this day will look like here for the next 30, 45 minutes or so. You can see uh, the press conference set up behind me with the tables. You'll have four or five speakers at a time. So 2 o'clock is when these announcements start rolling in. After that's complete, we'll bring on sort of the who's who of Dallas sports icons. We expect legends from the Mavericks, Stars, uh, and of course, FC Dallas as well. But we would likely to start with Dan Hunt, who Mike, you mentioned earlier, uh, president of the FC Dallas Club, as well as the chairman of this bidding process uh, that city leaders have gone through now for really years uh, to try and bring the World Cup final here. Uh, if it's good news, you can imagine that will be a celebratory press conference. We'll talk a lot about what went right. Uh, if Dallas does not get the final, you, of course, will get sort of a post-mortem on uh, what could have been different, what could have been better, uh, why, for example, AT&T Stadium would not get that final match. Uh, a lot of that will probably come down to transportation if that is the outcome. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. Obviously, uh, any number of games here is a big deal, and there will be some as a host site. You're guaranteed uh, at least a few. So it's the difference between potentially five Super Bowls in your city or eight. You can hear the music right now. Uh, that means the live stream for these announcements is starting up at the moment. You can see uh, lots of interested folks behind me uh, getting ready to uh, see if their work for years has paid off. And we'll keep you posted as we learn more about the outcome there and uh, what city leaders are going to say here at AT&T State. Mike, Paul, back to you. Matt Houston, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, again, as, you, as he just mentioned, they are just now getting the show underway. Um, there's probably not going to be breaking news in the first 90 seconds of the show. Probably not. <laughs> we will be keeping tabs on it, though, for you for sure. In the interim, while we have a moment, let's bring you Chris Lawrence's piece that we'll, Matt talked a little bit about the economic impact and five yeah. to eight Super Bowls basically being happening here in the DFW area over the course of uh, the summer of 2026. Yeah. Listen to this because this blew my mind, too. Chris Lawrence on, on just how important this could be for DFW. Yeah, the timing on this couldn't be better. Arlington is a top contender to host the men's World Cup final. The international organization that governs soccer is in town right now. FIFA officials spent the day at AT&T Stadium checking out its security, concessions, and media accommodations. It's likely their last look before deciding which city in North America gets the World Cup final in 2026. Now, Arlington is guaranteed to host a few matches, but getting the maximum number and the final, well, that'd be a massive boost for North Texas. The Dallas Sports Commission compared it to hosting eight Super Bowls. They say it could create up to 3,000 jobs and have an impact worth $400 million. 
Yeah, just consider that for a moment, what we're talking about here, because, uh, you know, again, depending on where you're from and where your uh, allegiances lie from yeah. a sports perspective, you may be more inclined to prefer the Super Bowl or the yeah. World Cup final. It's, it's your pick. Uh, if you're watching right now, you might be more inclined to prefer the World Cup final. Yeah. Um, but from a financial impact for even one of these group stage matches or a semifinal or a quarterfinal to be of the economic impact of a Super Bowl, that's yeah. a mouthful. That is enormous. <laughs> and I'm sure there are people watching this right now that will feel that economic impact. It Definitely. may have a job that's different than what they have right now because yeah. of the World Cup coming here to the, to the States, because of the World Cup coming here to the DFW area. That they may not even know it right now, but you know, over the course of the next year and a half or two, things may change in their lives because of this event. It's going to have seismic impact. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking the other night, and it was shocking to you for me to tell you that they said that just one of these group stage games is mm. equivalent economically mm. to a Super Bowl. And that's the, you know, in American sports, that's the, the pinnacle of what we see. And so just to hear that, I mean, the Dallas Sports Commission, they're expecting. $400 million to come to this region because of the World Cup. It's going to create roughly 3,000 jobs, just like you were mentioning. Some of these people, you know, might not have the same job, you know, in mm -hmm. 2026 than they do now. Um, but just, it, it can't be understated how big of a deal that the World, FIFA and the World Cup coming to the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, and most specifically Arlington, and the Arlington Entertainment, Entertainment District, that area is going to get um, a ton of uh, uh, support as well. Again, we are standing by waiting for news to come down. It's, it's been reported three, four times over now over the course of the last couple of years that AT&T Stadium in Arlington would be the host site for the 2026 World Cup Final. So if that's not the news that is revealed over the course of the next 10, 15 minutes or so, yeah. it would be rather shocking. But there are other options here. There are other considerations. Uh, Matt yeah. Houston mentioned the, tr the travel aspect of it all and the mass transportation aspect of it all, a lot of people that are going to be coming to watch a World Cup final aren't going to be driving here. No. And they're going to need a way to get to AT&T Stadium if there is one major detriment to AT&T Stadium. It is its lack of mass transportation opportunities, yeah. or possibilities rather, and does that rear its head here at the 11th hour and do they decide to go a different direction because of that? Yeah, I mean, so that's something that they've uh, mentioned, like we've met with um, the Dallas Sports Commission um, over the course of the last couple of years and we've, talk, we've talked to them on many stories. Um, and that's the one thing that they've always mentioned that they acknowledge is like they're the biggest thing holding them back from potentially um, getting the World Cup final is the lack of um, public transportation. Um, and then it's, it's uh, Arlington is the largest city in the United States that doesn't have public transit. And so um, we've talked to the, the mayor uh, on numerous occasions. They have a plan um, for uh, the World Cup um, and they're just implementing those changes over the next couple of years. Um, but you know, I, I, like you said, it, it would be shocking if they, uh, if they went elsewhere um, because of something like that. For somebody like you, as big a soccer fan as I personally know, yeah. what would this mean? For, for me personally, I, I'm just super excited that, mm. um, you know, I've, watched, I've always watched the World Cup, you know, as a casual sports fan. I didn't really get into um, covering soccer as, as, as uh, much as I did until I, I was working in Austin and uh, Austin FC came about. And that, that's when um, I started covering soccer, at MLS, you know, international um, more uh, feverishly. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, just the... And like I said, I was two years old whenever the, the, when it uh, came here last time. So mm. I don't obviously I don't remember it. Yeah. Um, and this is something that will be cool for me personally, soccer fan. You know, I want to, um, you know, be be here to to cover it and um, and just enjoy it, uh, the, all the festivities that come around it. Mm. I mean, regardless of whether DFW gets the final, AT and T Stadium gets the final or not, high Respectful. level, big time matches yeah. are coming here to DFW, and there will be a spectacle regardless. But Nothing will match the final, and, and again, we are a matter of minutes away. The show is on the air. We are uh, six, six minutes, minutes and change into it. Uh, they are, they're going from two until two thirty, so we're going to know here in, in uh, next fifteen to twenty minutes in, in the very near future whether or not it's indeed true that AT and T Stadium is going to host the uh, World Cup final in twenty twenty six. We talked a little bit about the economic impact. 
Let's hear from a business owner right there in Arlington. Our Matt Howerton sat down with one to learn a little bit more about what this could really mean for them. If it's not beer. I am super excited. How can you not be excited? <laughs> Soccer is usually the point of discussion at Petacolis Brewery in Dallas. And Thursday. It's the pinnacle. There's no bigger sporting event. The possibility of AT&T Stadium playing host to the World Cup final was on tap. It's going to be a huge day in this city's history for sure. Michael Petacolis is the owner here, a soccer nut who loves hosting watch parties for the men and women's national teams. Well, we had the Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl's nothing compared <laughs> to the final of the World Cup. Rumors have swirled about the World Cup final being played at AT&T Stadium. The latest coming from the British tabloid The Sun, reporting that not only the final will be played at Jerry World, but the main base for FIFA will also be in North Texas. This is Peter Welpton. He hosts the Kick Around, a soccer-oriented show on the ticket. Not only is there AT&T Stadium that will hold somewhere around 100,000 people, but there are two other giant stadiums next door within walking distance that could also host viewing parties and other fan events. FIFA hasn't confirmed the Suns report, but said an announcement is coming on February the 4th. AT&T Stadium on Instagram shared that to its story Thursday afternoon. Winning this race will mean a lot to the economy, up to 400 million. To have, you know, the gem of the soccer world in our backyard in 2026. You'll cheers to that. Can't beat it. I'll be there. I will be there. <laughs> in Dallas, I'm Matt Howerton. So we have news for you already just coming down in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. The opening match will be held in Mexico City at Estadio Azteca, the stadium we were talking about before mm -hmm. that hosted the World Cup final in 1970 and 1986. Some symmetry there to bring the opening match back to that location yeah. and uh, kick off the 2026 World Cup in style there in Mexico City. We know about the, the intrinsic connection with soccer that, that Mexico has with El Tri and, and how popular they are here mm -hmm. in the DFW area as Definitely. well. This is a really cool way for them to, to launch into the 2026 World Cup there in Mexico City. Yeah, that, I mean, so that doesn't shock me. It, mm -hmm. I, um, I, we were talking before we started this that if uh, Azteca didn't get a, a, the final, like you know, we expect AT&T to get, they would do something special mm -hmm. for this stadium because it has that that history uh, with FIFA and just in soccer culture there in Mexico. So I mean, th this is the first stadium uh, in FIFA history to host three World Cups. So Mexico is the first country to do so as well. Um, and so yeah, it's, I mean, th th that that's not shocking for uh, for me to hear um, at all. So um, I guess. The question will then become how many more uh, matches um, down the road, you know, do they get a semi, do they get the third place match, um, do they get the final, probably not, but right. you know, um, right off the top, Studio Azteca opening match. All right. About 500 of you with us right now on the WFA YouTube channel, the live chat lighting up uh, Ty Perkins talking about the concerns about getting here to AT&T Stadium being difficult. He said out of all the stadiums in the running, ours is the hardest to get to. That's fair. From a mass transit perspective, absolutely. I will say from my experience of going around North America covering different sporting events, they're really good at getting cars in and out of AT&T Stadium. <laughs> They've mastered that piece of it. If they could just rope in some mass transit, then they'd have it all figured out. Um, it, it is a concern. And again, as we, st as we stand here at uh, 10 minutes after 2, we really don't know yet, except for we've kind of known for two years that AT&T Stadium is going to get the World Cup final. We expect that will be made official here in the, in the very near future. But if there was one thing that is a concern for the Dallas Sports Commission, that is a concern for the Dallas Cowboys, is that ability to get to AT&T Stadium if you don't have a car. Yeah, it uh, can't be understated. That's going to be a, a big uh, issue. That'll be something that we'll cover, obviously, you know, when it, the World Cup comes around is just, mm. you know, the headache that it might be, um, even with the plant, because, I mean, there's been, uh, you know, reports of, you know, there have, you know, buses that'll go, like a bus system that'll go um, mm -hmm. from the Metroplex or, or from downtown out to um, Arlington and out to Fort Worth and everything and just have, like, a big hub um, in Arlington in, in that regard. Um, but yeah, there's no uh, getting around the fact that, you know, all the Ubers and everything, that, that's going to probably be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. We will bring you updates as they come along all through the next uh, 
19 minutes worth that the show is on the air and we will continue long after that as well. We'll go back to Matt Houston there in Arlington to get reaction from uh, some of the there are some dignitaries in town to help spice <laughs> up the moment and, and make it, it just mean that much more that this uh, this opportunity we think anyway we're pretty sure is coming to AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Um, so we will keep you abreast of, of every update that, that comes down here yeah. over the course of the next 20 minutes or so. Raylan T. asking, when is the formal announcement? We don't know exactly what time, but it's any minute now <laughs> because the show's on the air from 2 to 2.30. 30, yeah. And uh, so they, they've got 18 minutes left to make the, the announcement, <laughs> and, and I would imagine it's going to not be at 2.29. So probably in the next five, six, eight minutes, we're going to know where the World Cup final will be, and they'll dole out a number of other announcements as well, semifinals and uh, group stage matches matches, we'll know what it's all going to look like in the very, very near future. Um, Let's see what else we got. Ray S. is asking, when will they announce which cities will host FanFest? I imagine that's probably not going to be part of today's no, uh, festivities. That, that's going to come further down the line when the individual host cities, sites have a chance to kind of sort all that out. They all have their own FanFest and yes. everything so like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that'll be something that, you know, the Dallas Sports Commission, you know, a yeah. year or two down the road will we'll plan and, and release that information. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so the, all that we're really expecting today is the full match um, announcement. All 106 games, I think is what it is. Um, yeah. 104 games, excuse me. Uh, all, of, all of those, the, the final, the semis, um, the opening match, which we already have learned uh, is Studio Azteca. Mm. Um, and then as well as um, where the United States, Mexico, and Canada will call base camp um, in the group stage. And so that's another thing that I'm kind of looking out for is, you know, Mexico has a very um, big uh, fan base here in DFW. They uh, at t Stadium hosts. Um, International friendlies and everything, and, and for uh, L Tree all the time. Um, same thing with the, with the United States national team. So I'd be curious to see um, where those uh, nations are going to call home um, mm. when, in the summer of uh, 2026. So so far, the only official announcement that has come down is the opening match that will be in Mexico City, Estadio Azteca, the host site for the 2026 World Cup opening match. Again, the final we expect to be AT&T Stadium. That information coming down. Uh, any moment now, but uh, we, we continue our wait. Take another look through our YouTube comments. Um, uh, here's an interesting one that, uh, that I think you can probably weigh in and hear on Paula. What's that? Who do you think will win the World Cup? There, there's a number of teams oh, at, the, at the top of those rankings that we've seen jockey for position over the course of the last couple of years going back to our most recent World Cup. Yeah. Uh, who would you handicap as the favorite right now? Um, I mean, so... It's so difficult to predict because I mean the the rosters are not really right made and you know until the basically the summer leading up. But um, with that said, um, you know France has Kylian Mbappe. He's very young. He's very good. They were in the World Cup uh, mm. uh, final the past two times, and so they're obviously a clear favorite. Um, whether or not Messi plays for Argentina, he's a little bit on the older side. Um, you have them. Some England is a very uh, uh, formidable side there. Um, but and then I mean. Call me a homer, but the United States, they're ranked, what, 10th in the tenth world? 10th in the world, yeah. So, I mean, they would be an outs like, you know, it'd be a dark horse. And you're, you're talking about, you know, the top 10, 12 teams in the world. If they can get hot, they have a, a young core that played in, in this last World Cup. They got um, eliminated in the first uh, round of the groups or the knockout stage. Um, but um, I would, my finger would point to one of the big powerhouses at this point, either France or or England, or, um, you know, Argentina, mm -hmm. Brazil, you know, Brazil's got Neymar. And uh, so th those would be the, the handful that I would, I would look to. Checking back with our crew over here, anything else announced yet? No. Not yet, okay. Okay. All right. I'm a little surprised, honestly. 216, and they're... they're they're, they're going to roll through these. They're <laughs> milking this for all it's worth, baby. Forget 2 to 2.30. They're going to blow out programming and go until 3. Uh, we, we will know, I'm sure, very soon here. Um, we talked about the concerns with getting to AT&T Stadium from a mass transit perspective. Um, let's take a look through some of those rideshare concerns, a story that we did a little while back about what it's like to get to and from AT&T Stadium if you're not driving yourself. <laughs> to at t Stadium by the tens of thousands. Let's go! But for 
to bumper traffic doesn't stop loyal fans. Jeez, go Cowboys! <laughs> Woo! How about them Cowboys? From showing up for America's team. First game and it was awesome! Coming to events and games is smooth, but fans tell us trying to get home after the game is a different story. CPD, lot 13, we have a fight in lot 13. Late into the night. Is it confusing? It's, oh, very, yeah, it's confusing. very confusing. Our cameras capture something that's not quite right. Well, we're trying to get an Uber. It is an absolute nightmare. The Uber ride canceled on us because they didn't want to travel over here to get us. The Uber driver can't find us. The stadium's rideshare lot crowded. The one that canceled on us just picked up another group right here. And when I told them where I was going, they hung up and canceled because I guess it wasn't further enough to make them enough money. People counting on rideshare apps to get home. And now says looking for drivers even though I already had a driver. Found chaos. Yeah. It seems a little disorganized. It would be nice to, it's hot. Dozens of people are waiting up to 40 minutes for a ride. It'll be a long night. And oftentimes. But now you're starting over again. Yes, yeah. we're starting over again. Their Uber and Lyft drivers don't show up. They canceled on us four times. Rideshare drivers blame traffic. There's nothing you can do with all the cars, all the traffic. High demand. It jumped, you know, over $100 in price. Leads to surge pricing that stings. 226 and 51 cents. It was $100 cheaper about 10 minutes ago. 260 something dollars to get back home, yes. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Some of the cars in this lot aren't even affiliated with rideshare companies. Yeah, I go here, I get cash rides, and yeah, almost all those guys do that. Rather, people like Rafael Bernardo are showing up as private oh, drivers. Money. It's all about the money. He names the price to give people desperate to get home a ride. And I say, I'm the hero. I'm swooping in and giving this person a ride. And then, but they always say thank you, and a lot of times they tip too, and they say, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, like the whole ride. Because they've been waiting in the chaos. Yeah. Arlington police warns against this. And so we wouldn't recommend any person get into somebody's vehicle that they don't immediately recognize as a party of the rideshare company or a taxi itself. From safety issues to traffic meltdowns that leave rideshare drivers in tears. Somebody just hit me from the back on the lot waiting on him literally just now. And I'm so upset because I just got my car. Are you oh, no. Whether it's a concert or a Cowboys game, it's incredibly frustrating. We found these problems persisted on three separate weekends for more than two months. Uber and Lyft drivers are fed up too. Canceling rides because I can't, it's really hard to find the people. Do you have to cancel on people? Yes. Why? Because you can't find them. Like right now, I've been waiting on her for 15 minutes because she can't get here and that's where the spot is. A spokesperson for AT&T Stadium declined an interview and told us the stadium has not received any formal complaints about these issues, adding the stadium has signage showing people how to get to the rideshare lot, along with Arlington police officers and other agencies directing traffic. Well, I say that with any, any major event that we have where we have 80,000 plus people coming, there are probably going to be issues that are that are uncontrollable. Uber told us price surge has become an issue because right now both companies say they're dealing with a driver shortage. Look, they're taking Jump. advantage of us. It's that simple. It ends with people looking for a fun night out, paying the price. No, they are patient because they know it's nobody's fault. After waiting half an hour for a ride share that never showed up. Hey, you guys trying to get a ride? Yeah. Well, would you be able to do that in cash? It took Rafael, a private driver, less than a minute to convince these people to get in his car. We want to get home. So they'll do whatever it takes. For sure, yeah, the surge. In Arlington, I'm Adriana D'Alba. So this is the opener. This is... Give you a look inside AT&T Stadium as they await further news. We do have more updates for you that have just come down in the last minute or so. The Mexico City match at Estadio Azteca, the opening match of the 2026 World Cup, will be on June the 11th. There will also be a match on June 11th in Guadalajara, in Guadalajara, in Estadio Akron, and then uh, they will have an opening match in Canada as well. That has been announced. That will be in Toronto at BMO Field on June 12th. Still waiting on the official opening 
U.S. match. Yeah. Of course, still waiting on the final, semifinals, still waiting on a lot of information, but we've got uh, three matches that have been announced now. The opening match for the entire World Cup going to Mexico City in Estadio Azteca on the 11th, Guadalajara also on the 11th, and then Toronto on the 12th. Yep, so that was something that I was kind of looking for, uh, forward to, was just whether or not... Um, the, with all the opening matches, they said that Studio Azteca was uh, the opening match. But I was curious if it would just be one opening match or if each country would get their own. And so mm. obviously with the announcement that uh, BMO Stadium is uh, getting an opening match of Canada, that tells me that the United States one is, is uh, the next one down, down the pipeline that they'll announce. Um, just the question is, where is it going to be? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be AT&T Stadium? Is it going to be um, SoFi? You know, SoFi, like w with the bright lights of Los Angeles, that could be... Um, just a, 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 something to highlight and everything. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's history there in the Los Angeles area with it being uh, held at the Rose Bowl um, in Pasadena mm -hmm. um, back in 1994. Um, so that's what I kind of expect next out of them is just uh, where is this opening match in the United States going to be held? It would seem to me, because you talked about how there have been World Cups in years gone by, where you've had the opening match and a semifinal yeah. and the, the championship match all taking place at the same venue. Mm -hmm. The U.S. has got, in, the, in Canada and Mexico as well, there are so many North American stadiums that are high-level, elite-quality stadiums. Yeah. It wouldn't feel necessary to do all of that, to have the U.S. opening match be at AT&T Stadium and have a semifinal at AT&T yeah. Stadium and have the championship match at AT&T Stadium. Why not, you know, it would make more sense to divvy that up a little bit and have your semis I hypothetically agree. at SoFi and MetLife and have the final at AT&T Stadium. Stadium. That makes more sense to me. That, for for AT&T Stadium to get, to get all of those would feel a little bit... Uh, Greedy. <laughs> yes, frankly. Um, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that yeah. necessarily, but, but. Uh, certainly shoot for it. But I imagine that's not the path that this is going to follow. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, that was something I noticed too with um, the only other time that uh, more than one country has hosted the World Cup was in 2002. Um, South Korea and Japan jointly hosted. Mm. And when you look at the how those matches that were divvied, um, that you don't see that that trend of you know the final got also a semi or also third place and also uh, the opening match. Um, it also they had the most venues. There was 20 venues in 20 cities um, mm. in, in that particular tournament. Um, historically, all the all the single hosting countries have gotten 12. Um, this last one had eight in, in Qatar. Um, so we have 16 in, amongst the three uh, the three countries in North America. Um, so I kind of anticipate them like you said divvying up you know the uh, the opening match will be here and then this uh, the semis will be in two other stadiums um and then the final would be on its own um but you know these all these stadiums are going to have multiple matches like so, some of them will have a quarter final in and maybe a semi or mm. um um, a round of 16, a couple round of 16 matches. And so that's what they're kind of banking on is just stockpiling all those matches because yeah. economy wise, that's going to be big for you. We, eight is the max. Correct? I believe, I believe so. Yes. Okay. So you're talking about probably some sort of structure of two or three group stage matches. Yeah. Around I've a 16 of match. Okay. In the group stage. Okay. So. so four group stage matches around a 16 match. A quarterfinal and a final would, and be, a seven. Final that, would be seven. You're that, already it's, boom. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I'm somewhere I'm, in that range. Yeah. Maybe a, like you said, maybe a couple round of sixteen matches. Yeah. Maybe that, that seems plausible too. Yeah. Plus, we're talking about a bigger World Cup this year than we've ever seen. Yeah. Forty-eight teams instead of thirty-two. A hundred and four so, matches to divvy up. So there's a lot, there's a bigger there, pie to get a couple slices of. Exactly. So I mean, that's even a good point that you bring up is that in the past, um, the, all these World Cups have had, um, you know, f three or four group stage matches. Well, now the group stage is much bigger. You mm. have more games. The, the, it, you've went up from, uh, uh, geez, I can't. Remember. It's it was it's 80 before, so I mean you've got 24 more games mm -hmm. just in the whole tournament, and yeah. so you go uh, up it, in teams from 32 to 48, you have more opportunities to host um, all those group stage matches. So it, they might there might be some stadiums that have five group stage matches, maybe it'll be six group stage matches, who knows? Um, but so that's kind of what we're looking to learn today. We said earlier that we didn't think it was going to go right until 2:29 before they announced where they the might. final would be. 
Here we are at 226, and we're still not sure. We haven't even learned where the uh, uh, American opening match will be. We know the opening match will be in Mexico City at Estadio Azteca on June the 11th of 2026. We know the Canadian opening match will be in Toronto at BMO Field on the 12th. It's about all we got so far, and... Uh, Allegedly, they got four minutes left in the show, so we'll see how uh, how quickly they reveal this information. But um, you at home, sitting on pins and needles, just like the folks in Arlington are as well, what's waiting to chat? learn this information. What's, what's that? What's the YouTube chat doing? Let's see. They're saying, oh, please not SoFi. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Listen, I've, I've been to each of these three stadiums, AT&T, obviously, MetLife, SoFi. The one that I would be most surprised by would be MetLife. It, it's kind of nondescript. Um, it's not. A, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't. It doesn't really wow you in any way. Um, Eight hundred and eighty of you have weighed in on our poll. Which venue do you think it will be? Fifty-three percent of you voting for AT&T Stadium. Our numbers are probably skewed just a tad by the audience, but that's okay. Um, 15% saying MetLife, 17% saying SoFi, 15% saying Other. Again, we are still in wait here at 227, waiting to find out where they will be uh, for the World Cup final. Um, one of the other things that they're going to need to make sure they've got in place is all of the necessary infrastructure. They've got most of it, but there's another hotel coming to the Arlington area just to make sure they are fully ready to go. A multi-million dollar business deal is on the table for Arlington City Council. Lowe's Hotel wants to knock down this Sheraton and build a 500 room, $410 million hotel. If council approves, Mayor Jim Ross will sign the contract. This is no new debt, no new taxes. This is self-funded and we're given some rebates. Arlington would offer 40 million in incentives to Lowe's if the deal is approved. Kathleen Roman Venable serves on the Latino Advisory Board for Arlington. She is thrilled the development contract includes a 30% participation goal for minority and women-owned businesses. 30% can go a lot higher. I think it's important for us to be more and more involved. 30% is just a number I think women can reach for the stars. The Sheraton redevelopment project will create a third Lowe's Hotel in the Entertainment District. Live by Lowe's opened in August 2019. Another project, Lowe's Hotel and Convention Center, will open in February. Earlier this year, Lowe's Managing Director talked to us about that 888-room facility. Over 260,000 square feet, and the highlight being the 50,000 square foot ballroom, which is one of the biggest in northern Texas. If approved, the third Lowe's Hotel will draw even more people to the entertainment district and more jobs. We have over 20,000 more people working now than we did a year ago. That's exciting. And I think that this addition is going to be even bigger and better for Arlington. In Arlington, I'm Scoop Jefferson. So we have one more piece of information that has come down as we have hit 2.30 on the nose. When the show is done, by the way, they will hold a press conference out there at AT&T Stadium to discuss what we've learned and talk about where they go from here. We will bring that to you live right here on this live stream in uh, however long it takes to get them to the yeah. podium. And once we, once we do have all this information, because it's 2.30 and we still don't have all of the information, but we do have one more piece. The opening U.S. match will be in Los Angeles That's at so SoFi far. Stadium. Kim Kardashian sharing the news <laughs> just a moment ago. SoFi Stadium for the opening U.S. match. This is not the World Cup final, just to make that abundantly clear, because I know all of you are probably ears up for, wait, SoFi, what do you... The opening U.S. match will be at SoFi. We still have not been told where the World Cup final will be, except for the fact that we've been told by multiple different outlets three or four different times over the last two years. So you basically already kind of know. Um, that will, we think, be made official at some point. Yeah. We, would, we thought it would have been by now. So we're, we're, we're still. I'm kind of I'm, surprised I'm, that I'm, we're still going. <laughs> It was in the TV guide for 2 to 2.30 that this show would be, and uh, it's 2.31, and we're still rolling. So at some point, we will learn where the uh, World Cup final will be. And uh, again, we expect the answer to that question to be AT&T Stadium right down the road in Arlington. Um, but, but still, we wait. Here we go. <laughs>
I want to see what we're, we're talking about in, in the chat. Um, Again, the opening match for the World Cup as a whole, Mexico City in uh, Estadio Azteca on June the 11th. They'll have a match also on June the 11th in Guadalajara. And yeah. then the opening Canadian match will be in Toronto at BMO Field on June the 12th of 2026. The opening U.S. match, the only American soil match we know as of right this moment at SoFi Stadium. The date still yet to be announced, but uh, that will probably be a matter of moments yeah. considering they've already revealed the location. They've given the date very shortly thereafter. Um, but we still wait. Here we are 32 minutes into the reveal of all of this information and the big ticket item where the World Cup final will be is still to be determined. Arguably, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, from, an, from an official standpoint, yes, yeah. we still wait to find out exactly where it will be. All right. Well, it's, I mean, we got uh, people are wondering what they, they want the the final to be hosted in the Cotton Bowl. I mean, th that that would be kind of cool, honestly. But for the historical aspect of it, but I mean, that was announced. from somebody who's covered a number of events at the Cotton Bowl. That that stadium, unfortunately, is past its prime. Uh, um, yeah. Beautiful stadium, love it. It's got an incredible historical importance. It's not, it would need a ton of TLC to be in a position to host this event. What's that? What's that? Check teams. Check teams. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I mean, the, uh, the, so the SoFi is going to, uh, that match is going to be June 12th. Okay. Dallas's okay. first game, or so maybe Arlington, is going to be on the 14th. We don't know. So that, that must be a, a group stage uh, okay. match. Um, well, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. That they're announcing there. So that's the, the first. Arlington's first match will be June 14th. June 14th. So okay. we, we got that. They came down. And then, like, so there's the, the one, the first of what we expect to be six, seven, eight matches yeah. to be held at AT&T Stadium June 14th of 2026. A World Cup group stage match will be held at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Yep, I mean that's the, the going back to the um, the Cotton Bowl thing. Like you said, it's like th that that stadium is just too old now. Mm. It, it, you know, all of these stadiums that uh, are hosting in the United States are all NFL stadiums. It's it's all the mm -hmm. newer ones. You got Cowboy the, where the Cowboys play, where the Chargers play, where the Giants play, where at Arrowhead um, in uh, Kansas City. So um, all these like newer stadiums that can hold a lot of people. To, uh, to, I mean, obviously Cotton Bowl can too. I mean, Cotton Bowl holds what uh, almost a hundred thousand, uh, over a hundred thousand. It's but in that. It's a, maybe 80, in that yeah. in that range. Um, but yes, I mean, FIFA wants to have these newer, nicer stadiums. Um, you know, to get all to um, put the publicity up on it and everything. Mm -hmm. and they want it to be a big shiny toy, um, so to speak. Um, so I mean, that's why. And so they said the U.S. group stage matches will be in L.A. Oh, okay. So the United States uh, group stage matches are going to be at SoFi and at Lumen Field in Seattle. So okay. that, that's, that's good information as well. Um, we don't have any dates on those. Um, but so the United States men's national team, um, which will probably feature um, a handful. Uh, basically, the crux of the, the meat of the team is, is already kind of set in stone. It's all the... Uh, American-born players that are playing in the Premier League or in uh, La Liga in Spain or um, in the French leagues, just the, all the overseas guys. So you're talking Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, um, yeah, Tyler Adams, um, Ricardo Pepe might be on this. I, I was kind of shocked that the, t the Texan Ricardo Pepe mm. um, was uh, not included in the last one. Um, but he's been playing extremely well overseas as of late, and he's extremely young. So... Um, Basically, the, the, the young core of the, of the United States team is already kind of set in stone. Um, it'll be the, the last, uh, you know, seven to eight mm -hmm. spots is what people will be jockeying for. Let's see what's, what, what schedule we got here. Yeah, I see it. Um, let me see. Um, so we have this, the group stage schedule. So the first match in Dallas is, is June, the 14th? June 14th. The second one is going to be on... Monday, June 17th, and then there's about a week off, and they'll have another one. Uh, it's, sorry, the, the picture is sideways. That's why I'm tilting my head. Uh, it looks like it's June, Monday, June 22nd. 22nd. Yep. 
and then the five or sorry, there's so they have five they have five group stages. So what did five I, group what stage did I, matches because for, the, the for group Dallas stage is bigger now. So they have five group stage matches. Um, the third one I said we said was Monday, June twenty second. The fourth one is Thursday, June twenty fifth. And then the twenty fifth and twenty seventh. Yeah, the, and then the, it rounds out Saturday, June twenty seventh. So we have five group stage matches coming to um, AT and T Stadium in Arlington. So there you go. There's five Super Bowls you just got. So, but take this a step further. Pull that back up for me, real quick. Yeah. Because, and I think you could probably leave it leave it small, so you can kind of oh. cross reference how many group stage matches Dallas got as compared oh, yeah. to everybody else. So Vancouver I don't got think five. Everybody else got Seattle more got than four. Me. SoFi got five. Or sorry, no. Um, Levi Stadium in, in the Bay Area got five. Yep. Um, SoFi has that opening stage match. Um, or sorry, the, the the opener. Then they got five. Uh, NRG, our friends in Houston got five. It looks like nobody's got more than five. So there's no. That, it's that either you either got four or five. Yeah. But I guess what I was trying to see is if that would telegraph, you know, hey, somebody got six, and that's either good news or bad news, for depending that on how stadium. you want to look at it for that particular stadium. Def good point. Looks like all of the Vancouver, Seattle, uh, San Fran, L.A., across the board, Houston, Dallas, KC, Atlanta, Miami, Boston, Philly, uh, New York, New Jersey, Toronto, across the board, the, the Mexican cities got four apiece, it looks like. Uh, three uh, for Monterey. Yep. Three for Mexico City. Four, four for, for Guadalajara. Guadalajara. Um, Everybody else, it looks like, got five. Toronto. Doesn't really lead you to believe one thing or another about where the uh, knockout stage matches will go, but that is huge economic impact for all, all of, of those, those cities, cities yeah. to be able to get three, four, five World Cup group stage matches over the course of the final two and a half weeks of June in 2026. It's, um, it, it's interesting to me that that Kansas City has four when all the other – so maybe Kansas City, Arrowhead might – because they only have interesting. four. Interesting, yeah. Um, so and all, obviously all the Kansas other, City having the connection to the Hunt family. The Hunt family. They own the Chiefs. That That's an yeah. interesting – Seattle has only four, so maybe – they, maybe one of those has a semifinal or, or, or so to make up for the fact that they don't have. Seattle uh, is a huge, huge soccer, soccer city. city with uh, oh my Seattle goodness. Sounders. So, um, is is there a bigger soccer market in America than Seattle, Washington? Prob I mean, I mean Kansas, 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 Kansas City's city is yeah. really big. Um, obviously, North Texas. You know, we have the uh, the Hall of Fame here mm -hmm. at, at Toyota Stadium. But I mean, S Seattle, Kansas City, and Dallas, uh, DFW, are probably the bigger ones yeah. that, that are soccer markets. That I, I just say. mean in terms of the, the rabidness of the fan base D that for too, an MLS yeah. team. Definitely. You, you don't see that really at, at, at a level higher than what Seattle has generally brought over the course of the last De five, six, eight years or so anyway. Definitely. Um, Atlanta's in that a similar conversation. Mm -hmm. um, Yep, Interesting. Okay, so Kansas City and Seattle both with four, four instead of five group stage matches. So perhaps we're you know, we're, tr we're trying to read tea leaves here. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's 2.39. We thought we were going to know like 20 minutes ago where, where the, the final, would final was going to be. <laughs> and here we are still rolling along, still waiting for that piece of information. Um, yeah. But we can do this. Set your timer on your phone right now. 861 days from today, the first World Cup group stage match that will be held at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, June 12th of 2026. About two and a half years from now, you will be able to attend a World Cup match yeah. here in the DFW area. And see, that we... will be the first of five over the course of a 15-day period. And so Atlanta is a major soccer city. I agree. Yeah, no doubt. They no they doubt. Um, they have in the at least in the MLS they have um, the biggest um, stadium that, that mm -hmm. you can play in because they play in the same stadium as the Falcons. Um, so are, and then obviously um, the Sounders do as well at Lumen Field, and so they can really pack that place out. Um, let's see what else we got. My can you guys invite me to that group chat somehow? That teams chat. Yeah, we can. They're posting in. Uh, in digital uh, let me see mm. if I can add you to it um, that I, I, I think the, t the tea leaves are real there I think that that Seattle or, or Kansas City is gonna get a match of significance yeah not necessarily the final but I mm -hmm. think that that the fact that they got four and every other United States Stadium got five yep. means something 
Again, running you through what we know so far, the opening match for the 2026 World Cup in Mexico City on June the 11th at Estadio Azteca. They will also have a match on June 11th in Guadalajara. The opening Canadian match will be held in Toronto on June the 12th at BMO Field. The opening U.S. match at SoFi Stadium on June the 12th as well in Los Angeles. The first match in Arlington will be June the 14th of 2026, the first of five, June the 14th, 17th, 22nd, 25th, and 27th, they will have group okay. stage matches at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. And now we're just Getting seeing new two group of 16 matches and one group of eight, eight match. match. So now that's you're talking about a quarterfinal final. as well. So that's, that's three more, that's eight in total. Have they already hit the max? The, I don't know if there was ever officially established a max. I yeah. think it was just generally talked about that Eight might be the cap. They're already that at eight. They're already at eight, but I don't know that that necessarily yeah. means anything. Um, that's interesting. But it did, it did just it immediately, that was the first thought I had. Wait, that's already eight. Is that, <laughs> is, is that a bad thing? Yeah. That we'll just goes see. to the fact Probably that not, the, the but tournament's a lot bigger. So, I mean, yes. for the first time ever. So, I mean, this is something that we've never seen before. Okay. Um, so, so, two I'm, games in the group of 16 and a group of eight, eight match, so a, one a quarterfinal final. match. And that brings the overall match total for AT&T Stadium in Arlington to eight games. Again, June the 14th, 17th, 22nd, 25th, and 27th in the group stage. And now three games already in the knockout stage, the group of 16 and a quarterfinal match. FIFA confirms match. Dallas will have nine games. FIFA, okay. So there's one more. There's one more to be had. I wonder what I that wonder one's going to be. where it might be, what it might be, but what it might and, be. And that makes sense because if you think about it, the way that they've laid it out, there's five group stage matches. Mm -hmm. They've done two, uh, two uh, round of, or group of 16s and then um, a group of eight. And so then they're not going to give them a semifinal two because you know, they want to divvy it out. Right. And so right. that, in my mind, that would open the, the door for the final to be Jerry World. But as has been reported for two years times. now, so again, it's not, uh, it hardly qualifies as breaking news, but we are awaiting the official announcement of that news here any moment Pete now. Pete also said a few, a few sites will have nine games. Okay. So, I mean, like you said, they're going to, they're going to divvy it out. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of which match do you get, you know, so. Um, is it possibly Seattle and Kansas City that get the semifinals or they get an extra yeah. group of eight, you know, round of eight game? Um, never mind. We will have the most. Okay, never mind. It will be Dallas that has nine and that's it. Oh, here we go. There's a schedule. People are standing Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So there's the schedule that we were just looking at a few minutes ago trying to. Hmm? What was that? We have news coming down right now? No. Okay. okay. Not, not just yet. But yeah, so we have the schedule up on the screen. Um, this is what we were looking at, me and uh, Mike were looking at earlier. Like, as you can see, um, Vancouver has five. Seattle has four. Uh, the Bay Area, Levi Stadium has five. Los Angeles has, or uh, SoFi and in, Inglewood in has five. Um, Guadalajara has four. Rock game, Miami. Miami for the, for the third place game. Okay. Hard Rock, that's another big um, soccer market. You know, uh, Lionel Messi came to enter Miami. It was probably yes, the, the biggest signing in, in MLS history. Um, and so it has brought a, a resurged uh, interest in the MLS, um, both on Apple and, and all the places that you can get, get their matches. We've seen him play here twice, and the attention for uh, just to see him play, it, it speaks for itself. I mean, you know, there's people that have been trying to – get outside of his hotel to see where you know <laughs> I was uh, at the uh, before this last match there was a, a handful of fans that um, figured out what hotel they were staying at and they were all camped outside trying to get his autograph and everything so um, Miami will be a, a, a good market for for them to to highlight Gianni Infantino the FIFA president confirming just a moment ago Dallas will host more matches than any of the other host cities for the 2026 World Cup nine of the 104 matches in total, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for the site to host the most to not host the final, right? It just, that's it just what, seems like that's... If uh, a ring tea leaves... This is where we've expected this to go all along. We're pretty sure that's what's coming down. It is just a matter of time. And uh, 
Let's the see. news that all of you that are that are watching with us right now have been waiting for for a while to be made official. Infantina. It would imagine it would seem anyway we are not far away from that officially coming down. Clearly they're going to go right through until three o'clock with this announcement. Yeah, forget, no kidding. Forget to until two thirty, but uh, we, we should know here in in very short order. If I were a betting man, it would make a lot of sense that Kansas City and Seattle having those four group stage matches instead of five. I would Maybe imagine they get the, the semifinals. semifinals. That's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of. That's what I'm thinking. It makes some sense. We did just learn a moment ago. Miami gets the third place game. We are still waiting on semifinal sites and the final site to be made official here in the next uh, talk about 10 minutes or so would be my guess. FIFA's milking this moment. That's yeah, they, sh they certainly are. Buddy, who are you telling? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else people are saying in here. Um, the people are talking about Miami is going to be huge. Yeah, that's going to be a huge deal mm -hmm. um, for them. Oh, we posted. So we posted a poll. Obviously, it was like, which venue do you think is going to get the final? <laughs> I wonder which one over half of the, yes. the responses. Um, came in at uh, AT&T Stadium. So that's what we're expecting, at least, you know. So yeah. Again, we will bring you to Arlington when this all wraps up, when it has been made official. Again, the expectation yeah. that Arlington will be named as the host site for the 2026 World Cup final. When all of that does go down, they will have a press conference in, uh, inside of AT&T Stadium to talk about where they go from here, how they make sure that everything is just as ready as they expect it to be come the middle of July of 2026. Um, they got but, uh, and Kevin Hart on there. the desk. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just, they're, like they said, they're milking it, man. I don't know who this gentleman is, but. <laughs> it, it's, it's what we do in TV. We, yeah. we, we ring it out for every little drop that it's worth. Um, but again, we'll bring you to Arlington, let you hear from the people that uh, that made this happen. Monica Paul of the Dallas Sports Commission, Dan Hunt of FC Dallas. There have been we'll a be lot there. of people involved in, in bringing this all to fruition. Certainly the Jones family and the Dallas Cowboys, obviously very uh, high so on the list Gary of people. How so do you think Gary is to hear that he has the most World Cup matches out of everyone? <laughs> it's the only thing in the world that matters to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, listen, this is... I think this is an important moment in the lifespan of AT&T Stadium because when it first came to be, it was this, this gleaming beacon on a hill, frankly, mm -hmm. as far as stadiums go, and it hosted the Final Four, and it hosted uh, the Super Bowl, and it hosted uh, the uh, first college football playoff championship game, and on and on and on, all these high-level events, and then for whatever reason, it's been a little bit slow to get anything to come back. Everybody thought, oh, they'll have another Super Bowl there in 10 or 12 years or whatever, and here we are 12 years later, and that still hasn't happened yet, and not only has it not happened yet, they're still not on the list. Oh, here we I go. I feel like this is... Jay wants us to have people vote on the poll. What is the most you'd be willing to pay for a World Cup ticket? One option is $100, one option is $500, one option is $1,000, and then his last one is my 401k. It's going to be um, a pretty penny to get in there. It's going to cost you more than 100 bucks to get in. I guarantee you that. So if you're clicking $100... You're not living in reality. We'll see you in the <laughs> parking lot, and, th and that's as far as you're going to get. Um, but no, I do think that this is, this is a little uh, feather in Jerry's cap to go back to the Roger Goodells and the mm -hmm. NFL owners and then the, the NCAA and say, hey, listen, you can still come to my, my place and, and put on a high-level yeah. event. This is still a, a destination location to host an event like this. This is a, this is a very, very big deal for the future of them getting so you, this uh, kind of you, event you think they're gonna to, to Arlington. You think they'll start coming to the, uh, you know, get a national championship or all-star game or, you know. I mean, I don't know if it's going to come one after the next after the next the way that it did like 2011 to 2015 because mm -hmm. that, that was, you know, when you have a brand new stadium, that's what happens. But uh, it probably won't hurt. Um, Are they about I'm to announce it? I'm hearing a here we go. We're getting... New York, New Jersey final. New York, New Jersey gets really? the final. Really? Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Shocking. Wow. You probably just heard it reverberate across our newsroom. The final will not be, be at, in Dallas. Yes. It will not be in Arlington. It will not be at AT&T Stadium. It'll how, be a, how, far, how far did my jaw just drop there live on the air? I'm, I'm a little shocked myself. 
I can only imagine wow. how shocked Jerry Jones must be, Monica Paul must be, Dan Hunt must be right now. Woo. This Again, we're talking about reported multiple times over, three, four times over over ESPN the course of the last twice. two years. You know. That the final would be at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. FIFA drops a bomb and it will not be in Arlington. And I'm wondering what the YouTube that's, comments That's exactly where I went. Now, my goodness. Um, um, wow. There you go. Well, yeah, the, the, there, there, had to, there had to be one here's more. Here's your console, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Here's your consolation prize. A semifinal will be so at AT&T their, that's Stadium, their final one. but not the final. That's insane. <laughs> Money Pit Castle from Santa Fe says, LMAO, they did us dirty. <laughs> Michelle says, wow. Lissandro says, why? Look at the chat. Why? What? Nick no. Scholl, a bunch of sad gamblers today. <laughs> This is, wow, wow. I'm legitimately surprised All for morning. something to be as reported as it's been but by that, multiple different I outlets. I wonder if it was going to be at t Stadium and the fact that it got leaked, maybe did they like do it as just like to, you know, reverse it and be like, oh, you think that it's going to be at at t Watch this. Does, is FIFA that petty to do that? But why would they care? I don't know. I'm just I'm thinking I'm thinking out loud at this point because. Listen, we're talking we're talking we're talking about FIFA. That's they've done some stuff in their time, yeah. so I, I'm not putting anything past them. But that is, wow. AT and T Stadium will not be the host site for the World Cup final. It will host a semifinal. That news coming down just moments ago. Our YouTube comments blowing up. Poppy Gonzalez says, guess I'm flying to New York. Wow. Pressure's starting soon. So we'll Bird OG says, you have Pressure the most games soon? of the tournament. Be grateful. Listen, it's not a, okay. a grateful or ungrateful thing. It's just, it's shocking. It's legitimately shocking, and it changes the uh, the landscape of, of what this is going to look like. It's uh, Jamie Morin says, this has to be because of mass public transit. I mean, I guess, but... You're going to have a semifinal here, so clearly you're not that worried about it because there's yeah. going to be a whole lot of people that have to come here for a semifinal too, that have to come here for a quarterfinal too, that have to come here for two the most round matches of 16 in, matches too. Like it's, they have the most matches out of everyone. They said that, so I mean... That, that is could, shocking. I really want to wow. know what the reasoning of... Because, I mean, like we said, it, it's, it's been reported and rumored, you know, multiple times by very... Credible outlets, ESPN, um, outlets, wow. outlets that cover yep. soccer overseas in, in Great Britain. Um, wow, three like that. That's shocking to me that it's not uh, going to be here. But lo and behold, we still get semifinals. Uh, so. Yes, no. I mean, listen. And again, going back to somebody who just commented, be grateful. You still have you know the most. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's, it's not meant to be ungrateful in any way shape or form it's just legitimately very surprising michelle said i'm so sad and mad i'm so sad i think i think well yeah (laughs) i think a lot of people in the chat are are probably sad right they're just as shocked as we are you know yeah it was it it was presented and you know almost as a slam dunk it's like this is going to be the uh the inevitable final but not so fast after all of that um (laughs) <laughs> comment from somebody on twitter giving you and i props for writing out fifa's uh quote known ridiculousness on the wfa <laughs> live stream <laughs> that's that's crazy oh man that was yeah listen we were calling it the worst kept secret apparently it wasn't apparently not kudos fifa you can keep a secret <laughs> There you I go. don't know what else to say. That is legitimately shocking. It what was a foregone conclusion, it seemed, what had been reported so many times over. Evidently reported wrong, and New York, New Jersey, MetLife Stadium, the home of the New York Jets, the New York Giants, will be the host site for the 2026 World Cup Final. AT&T Stadium will get a semifinal, will get a quarterfinal match, will get two group of 16 matches, will get five group stage matches, nine matches in total, the largest number of any of the, the uh, host sites across North America, but it will not get the final. So it is interesting that um, 
MetLife was one of only two, like out of these, what, 12, like however many, 11 stadiums that are going to do it this time, uh, MetLife was one of only two um, that, that, were, that hosted World Cup matches um, mm-hmm. the last time. So maybe they thought they, they've done it before. We know that there's a familiarity there. Because um, the, other, the other one is, uh, is <coughs> where the Foxborough, Gillette, um, where the Patriots play. Um, all the, and, oh, I guess no, technically – Nope, because Soldier Field, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, so it's just those two. Um, so, I mean, so, maybe the familiarity there played, played, played a role. I suppose. Um, so, we talked about it earlier that they brought out, they, they pulled out all the stops in Arlington to yeah. hype this moment up, to make this moment as, as big as it could possibly be, certainly hoping for and wishing for and expecting for it to be that the World Cup final would be in Arlington at AT&T Stadium. Dirk Nowitzki's there, Paxton Pomacall of FC Dallas is there, Emmett Smith is there, Marty Turco's there. They are all expected to be at the podium here in a matter of moments. Monica Paul, of course, of the Dallas Sports Commission. Mm -hmm. We expect to talk Dan Hunt of FC Dallas and uh, also ties, of course, to the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. We expect to talk... um, but there's going to be a lot of questions of, of how did this end up this way? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, again, it reported three, four, four times over, even just this, this morning, morning. yeah. Even just this morning, one final report inside the billion-dollar venue that's going to host the, the World, World Cup, Cup final, final, that's going to host the World Cup final. In fact, not. Let's, let's go ahead and bring you to AT&T Stadium right now for reaction to a legitimate shocker as they begin the press conference with the Dallas Sports Commission there at AT&T Stadium. Welcome up. I think they're coming around the corner here. We are going to welcome up true sports legends here in Dallas, Fort Worth. He is the GOAT, Mavs legends, 14-time NBA All-Star 2023 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, Dirk Nowitzki, gets the hot seat right over next to me. We also have uh, FC Dallas midfielder and 2019 U.S. Soccer U-20 Men's National Team World Cup captain, Paxton Pomacall joining us, as well as Cowboys legend, NFL all-time leading rusher, 2010 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee, the one and only Emmett Smith, he's a soccer dad, as well. Daughter Reagan played midfielder at Texas A&M. And finally, the the effervescent DFW sports cheerleader, former Dallas Stars goalkeeper and president of the Dallas Stars Foundation, Marty Turco. (coughs) We can clap, it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. So I think we all know how these press conferences go in this modern era. Um, We are going to ask them a few questions and open it up to the floor. All we do is you stand up, identify yourself, we do have Kaylee and Priscilla. Kaylee's right over here. Priscilla is right over there to your right. We just ask that you raise your hand. They'll bring you the microphone. Stand up, identify yourself, and reveal who it is you're addressing the question to because we are streaming this. I know most everybody up here knows who you are, but um, if you wouldn't mind just telling us who you are and to whom you're addressing the question, we would appreciate it. But um, as a recap of the news, Dallas will host the most matches for FIFA World Cup 2026, nine matches total, which really is remarkable, plus a semifinal, five group stage matches in North Texas, June 14th, June 18th, the 22nd, the 25th, and the 27th. So as we think about this, and the eyes of North Texas, the eyes of the world really, will be in all of us right here as we host the most prestigious sporting event on the planet, the World Cup 2026. No greater event in the world, just Plainly put, what's your reaction to this, Dirk? Well, uh, good good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know there were some uh, disappointed faces uh, down there, um, but I th- I'm thrilled. I mean, we we have semifinals uh, of the biggest sporting event in the world, so um, I'm excited for for this region, for for North Texas. We're hosting nine games. Uh, we can show what a what a great city, what a great region we are, how diverse we are, and uh, so I'm. It's going to give uh, give a lot of opportunities to a lot of people in, in this area. So I'm I'm excited. Uh, World Cup semifinal uh, will be an incredible atmosphere and in, in you know obviously state of the art uh, facility here. So I'm uh, I'm I'm not too disappointed. I'm I'm, I'm thrilled. Paxton, what's your reaction? 
Yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, similar to what Dirk said, you know, just growing up in Dallas, how cool is it that we're hosting a semifinal of the biggest event uh, in the world? So I'm thrilled. Uh, hopefully, I'll be attending. Um, hopefully, US is playing <laughs> and I'll be playing, but if not, hopefully, I'll be attending. Um, like Dirk mentioned, the stadium's incredible, the city's incredible, all the effort that everybody's had to put in. Um, in the background that nobody sees, um, nine games. It's, uh, it's a testament to, to the work that everybody's done in the city, um, from the mayors all the way down to, to the last, last person that worked on this thing. You guys, you guys crushed it and we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for all, all of the effort you put in and uh, we get to host the most games because of it. So pretty happy. Well, um, <laughs> um, I'm excited for the city and the region itself. Um, to be hosting nine games is pretty amazing, and to be hosting the semifinals is also a great thing in the context of winning. Um, but there is some disappointment here uh, because <laughs> I got to speak my mind. I cannot believe we lost the jersey. So, <laughs> so, but, but it happened. And so, but Dallas itself is positioned itself nicely, and I think over the last five to ten years. The, the, the city, the state, the region itself has done a lot of things to position ourselves for a global event like this. And we're poised to host something as, as big as this. And, and I think this, this region deserves to have something on a major, massive global stage uh, like this. And so kudos to all the mayors and everyone else that have put in tremendous amount of effort and uh, resources to make this city and this region suitable for an event like this. So uh, the, all is not lost because uh, this is a region of champions. Uh, uh, I mean, King, I mean, we're talking about the Texas Rangers who won the World Series just recently. So it's not a lack of uh, effort. It's not by, um, uh, because we don't have quality sports or quality fields or quality infrastructure. We have all those things. And uh, maybe, maybe we get it on the next go around. Uh, it's great to be here uh, representing a world-class city, uh, Dallas in, in North Texas. Growing up in Canada, could never imagine this would, would be home. Uh, and growing up a soccer football fan um, and playing it myself, the fact that the World Cup is coming back here um, is amazing. I think it's just a testament to um, what this city has become. And well before I ever got here two decades plus ago, um, this, when you think of it, this is world class, and it's 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 not an accident that we have nine games. Um, the infrastructure that we have, the vision um, that our politicians, our sports leaders, uh, our business leaders in this community, and this effort spearheaded by Monica Paul to deliver an amazing uh, bid um, doesn't go unnoticed by a lot of people. And so, nine games, a semifinal. Is absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm tickled pink about it and trying to take a step back. Of course, you know what Emmett uh, is saying about not getting the championship game. Yeah, of course, it is disappointing because we know we do deserve it, but we also deserve these nine games. Yes. And it's going to be amazing for uh, our region, and I think it's just going to showcase all the class that we have uh, of our hotels, our airports, and all the infrastructure um, that has gone in, and, and, and the future of where we are is going to be showcased. So to me, that's what I think of. Um, as Emmett said too, this is it's a championship city. We we want championships, and we're gonna we're gonna show everybody uh, why we deserve the absolute best. So I think of world class, and I think of where we're sitting right here at ATT Stadium. It is the best facility in the world, and um, we're gonna have amazing uh, football matches here. So it's pretty exciting, and to be part of it, representing uh, sports in Dallas is an absolute humble opportunity to do so. So uh, this is a great day for the city of Dallas and uh, for North Texas open up to questions in just a bit, but Dirk, I just want to get your global perspective here. Obviously, Germany having won the World Cup four times, most recently in 2014. Uh, you grew up a huge soccer fan. Germany's hosted twice. The eyes of the world will be on North Texas. How does that make you feel as now almost an ambassador for this region as well? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to show uh, what Dallas and, and this region uh, is, is capable of. And, uh, how nice it is here, and so people will, uh, will uh, that never been here uh, will see what a great town this is with, with sports fans, and uh, like I said, so diverse 
over the last 20 years that, that I've lived here. So I can't wait to showcase uh, this region to, to people from all over the world. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm more excited than I am disappointed to, to have nine games and, and to host so many uh, people from, uh, from all over the world. So uh, I think Dallas is ready for it and it's going to be a, a great World Cup. And Paxton, you touched on it a little bit. I'd love to have you elaborate a little further. You played, you captain a U-20 World Cup team. Um, representing FC Dallas and as a professional soccer player, to know that matches will be played right here in, in your backyard, what does that mean? Yeah, that means everything. Um, growing up in Dallas, obviously, there's, there's other sports that, that might be highlighted a little more than soccer, but at the end of the day, uh, soccer, football, is, uh, it's the world's game. And uh, I'm, I, I can't overstate how excited I am for my friends from high school to see what, what that brings from, from different cultures coming here. Um, it's the World Cup, man. So it's, it's it, like I said, it's difficult to understate how important this is for me to show m my friends the culture of soccer, guys that grew up watching only basketball, football, baseball, hockey, um, how much this means to me and uh, the community. And Dirk mentioned how diverse the community here is. And, I don't think everybody realized how many football fans we have, soccer football fans we have in this area. Obviously, we have a lot of football fans. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited. And Emmett, you, you are a famous soccer dad. Again, I mentioned Reagan playing midfielder for Texas A&M. I mean, we know that the men's game lifts the women's game and vice versa. What does this mean for a family and, and for a family who's, who's watching soccer and, and interested in getting into the sport? Well, what it really means is that you get to see one of the largest um, uh, sporting events around the globe uh, right here in your backyard nine times and and for kids that are uh, you know from diverse background they get a chance if they haven't been introduced to it they get introduced to it so globally it's a beautiful thing and it's a great thing for the region itself to have nine games so you can get a chance to go out and see some of the best soccer players in the world come right here upon and ascend right here upon this region and this city and so for families uh, who are supporters of sports, no matter what sport it is, um, this is a tremendous opportunity to get engaged and to introduce your kids to things that they probably have never seen before or might have a chance to see now that it's on a global stage. And for uh, the entire region, uh, well, we get a chance to showcase our talents and our abilities to put things in place like great stadiums, great facilities, et cetera, et cetera, roads and bridges and everything else, along with the infrastructure to support all that. And so uh, it, it's a beautiful thing all the way around when you look at it, even though the disappointment may be there, forgetting it, the nine that we actually have is a beautiful thing that we can build, about, build up off, off of. So I'm excited about all of that. And Marty, you now work in the impact business, really, as the president of the Stars Foundation. As we're preparing the, the world here to welcome the world here to this region, what sort of impact do you think this region can make in, in, in the years leading up to 2026? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the largest tournament in the world, all the eyes uh, and focus will be, you know, on North America and, and us having the most games is, is significant. And, um, you know, we, we live in a community that, you know, what makes me most proud about uh, North Texas, it's the most philanthropic a area in, in this country. And it's, it's, not by, it's not by accident. And so a lot of people care, they give back, and they want to make this community better. And this, I, I, I know this is going to be an opportunity for us to showcase what we do here. Uh, all the work that goes in every day to make a difference for our kids, for our schools, for our healthcare system, and our education. And those things are the most important. And we're going to get a chance to showcase it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you're going to get teams from all over the globe and eyes on uh, our region. I think it's just fantastic. And I'd, you know, I'd, I'd love to say probably my proudest moments as an athlete were representing my country. Uh, I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm happy that Vancouver and, and Toronto get to host this uh, tournament as well. And it, it is a lot of pride. But now being a, a local resident here, um, the pride that we have in this city as a sports town, as being a sports fanatic, uh, growing up playing soccer, um, the chance that we have to impact our community, impact our economic value, but most importantly, just showcasing the value that we have here as citizens and humans and in our corporate side, to me, is the best part. And so. Uh, that's what I think of, you know, as, as, as much as we wanted the finals, right? It's, um, uh, it's just not lost on us what an impact it is. And I, I've never missed watching a World Cup um, since I remember. Uh, remember the days when 
you know, I got Italian heritage and Baggio missed a penalty kick and how crushed we were. Uh, and then every chance Canada gets to play in the, in the World Cup, you know, for a smaller country, um, it's just a, a great opportunity. So it, th this is magnificent. It's the biggest in the world. And so uh, we're pretty, I'm pretty excited for it. Thank you guys. We're gonna open up to questions. We have about five minutes as we have a hard out. Priscilla and Kaylee. Kaylee, right over here in the front, if you wouldn't mind, Pedro, just identify yourself and to whom you're addressing the question. Thank you. Pedro Silva, Univision Dallas. This question is for Dirk. Uh, Dirk, in terms of a context, being you a soccer fan, and as Gina said, growing up in a country like Germany, can you put in context what it means for people who are still not that familiar with, with the sport of soccer, the World Cup, in terms of competition, in terms of eyeballs, compared to, let's say, an NBA Finals, an Olympics. Um, can you describe a little bit of what this event means uh, to this city? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the biggest in the world. I mean, soccer is globally the, the biggest sport with the most supporters. So uh, this will be, all eyes will be uh, on, on this event for whatever, how long it's, uh, it's on. And, um, yeah, I grew up in in Germany, where everybody has soccer in their in their DNA. And be quite honest with you, soccer here in this country came a long, long way when I first got here twenty something years ago. Um, the league, the MLS, obviously has gotten better, has expanded. You know, back in the days with uh, with Beckham coming in, I think that opened up a whole new uh, a sport in in the U.S. and uh, of course, it, it could still come a long way, but uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's incredible what the, what, the, what the league and the sport has done. So uh, it's been fun watching the sport grow. More people talking about, you know, the, the leagues in Europe and following sports, the sport more. Um, so I think it's, uh, the, the, the country is definitely ready uh, to host this, uh, this World Cup, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun. Any other questions for our celebrity athletes who are up here. Priscilla and Kaylee can bring the mic to you. If not, we will say thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay, we can all clap. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. As soon as they clear the stage, we are going to welcome up the mayors of um, Please clap. <laughs> please clap. Everyone, please clap. Uh, um, they're thrilled. Yeah, listen, it, it, the, the moment the press conference began and they're all talking about how thrilled they are, I was brought back to <laughs> Apollo 13 and the scene where the wives are being hounded by the reporters. Remember, you're happy, Thank proud, you. and thrilled. And the reporters come running over and the, the one wife, well, we're, we're happy and we're proud and we're thrilled. Yeah. It, that, that was tough to watch yeah they they, they they listen it listen as somebody said before hey you've got the most matches of anybody don't be you know don't be disappointed don't be mm -hmm. of course yeah a world cup semi-final is coming to dfw is going to be at at&t stadium in arlington yeah that hasn't been the goal let's just be honest here that hasn't been the goal from the jump yeah the goal all along was for AT&T Stadium to host the final and that didn't happen today the headline today is AT&T Stadium misses out on World Cup final there is a subtext here there is a, a sub headline yeah. here of hey you're still getting nine matches including a semifinal, including two round of 16 matches including a round of 32 match including five group stage matches like there's a whole mess of soccer coming to DFW mm -hmm. in the summer of 2026. But what Monica Paul wanted, what Dan Hunt wanted, what the Jones family wanted, what the Cowboys as an organization wanted, what AT&T Stadium wanted was the final. And that ends up in New York instead. New York City gets the final. Dallas and Atlanta get the two semifinals. Miami, Miami Boston, KC, and LA get the quarterfinals. Yes, Miami has the third place game. Yeah. And then again, two round of 16 matches, which I believe Dallas is the only site, Arlington is the only site that has multiple round of 16 got. matches. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, that's the extra. That's the one that brings them to nine, apparently. Yeah. Um, and a round of 32 match, plus the five group stage that's matches. Nine. So there is a ton of really good soccer coming here to the DFW area. It will be a standalone semifinal game in uh, the middle of July 2026, mm -hmm. where the eyes of the world will still be on AT&T Stadium. 
but you could hear it in Dirk's voice. You could hear it in Emmett's voice. Emmett said, I can't believe we lost to Jersey. <laughs> um, yeah. You could hear it in their voice. There is absolutely disappointment that this didn't end up with what we thought was going to be the case, what was reported yeah. many times over in the last two years that it was going to be the World Cup final at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. And it turns out that won't be the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else there is to say. There's just that you missed out on the World Cup final, but you, you get the consolation prize is you get uh, the most matches out of every, every stadium. So, I mean, with that, I mean, economically, they're in a good spot because they get an extra yeah. match. So, um, I don't know how uh, the final, I mean, because obviously the final is going to be like worth more than some of these other uh, matches that are um, earlier than that. Mm -hmm. But still, um, I'm trying to find the grid of, you know, all the knockout stages. I'm trying to, I'm just searching Twitter, trying like going to all these different um, groups. So, I mean, our friends in Houston have seven matches. They have uh, five group stages of round of 32 and a round of 16. They're, they're at, after the round of 16, they're done. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, uh, Seattle has the, has the, the four group uh, round of 32, round Sorry, of 16. what's that? Oh, we do now have city. Okay, oh, sweet, that, that's yeah. that's really the the uh, the meat of this that we really want to hear. I didn't know that yeah. we had more press conference to go. Let's go back to Arlington and hear from some city leaders. I believe that's going to include Monica Paul of the Dallas Sports Commission and, and Dan some Hunt. others. Yeah, we are now on uh, the global stage. Um, Dallas has worked hard um, to be in a position to be able to host something like uh, a World Cup, and so in in my mind, what we need to be doing right now. Um, is immediately pivoting towards the business at hand, which is hosting the world's biggest party in 2026 and making sure everybody has a great time. We, are, we have the opportunity now to host the world here in our neck of the woods. Nine games is a lot of games, and I think there's something to be read into on why we were given that responsibility to host so many games. We're going to have so many people from around the world here in our city and we need to do everything we can to show them why Dallas is an international city and why Dallas is on the global stage. And so that's my focus at this point. It would, it would have been wonderful to have this historic um, final game played, but to have a semifinal and eight other games played here, there's a, a real opportunity to showcase um, what this city has become. This isn't the 1980s. Um, you know, J.R. Ewing is not a real thing this is the this is the dallas um that we want the world um to see and so they're going to get a chance to see that in 2026 and that's really where i think the focus ought to be how to make sure that um we show the entire world how fun and welcoming and beautiful our community is and so i'm as excited as i can be about it nine games is a lot of people from around the world who are going to be here for a considerable amount of time, and they're going to come away with an impression of our city that I think is going to stay with them forever. So I'm very excited, very happy. It's a great day. And a lot of impact across the region, Mayor Cheney. Yeah, just as my colleagues have said, um, usually us mayors are competing against each other um, for projects, um, but this collaboration really speaks to you know, how you had four regional cities come together with a large um, team behind us to say, what could we do together um, to compete as a region and showcase all of North Texas? Um, I'm really proud for the city of Frisco, our Visit Frisco team, and everyone I saw day to day leaning in, I know, along with the other cities and their staffs in this regional effort to lead up to today. Um, I know there's much more work ahead of us, um, you know, but in Frisco, it's going to mean so much more even after we host the games. Um, we're proud to call um, our partners that made today happen, you know, Dan Hunt and Lamar Sports, I mean, and uh, FC Dallas and Hunt Sports Group. Um, and of course, Jerry Jones with the Dallas Cowboys, they both call Frisco home for their worldwide headquarters. Um, and we know, we saw the impact the last time the United States hosted the World Cup. What that did for the sport of soccer. It really put the sport of soccer on the map in the United States and gave Lamar Hunt the confidence to say we can start a major league soccer um, league and it's continued to grow. Soccer's gotten more and more impact. We saw the messy impact hosting his first away game um, when he came to FC Dallas and the lasting impact for our community having the National Soccer Hall of Fame in our community and of course being the home of FC Dallas and the largest youth soccer complex I believe in the United States or one of them. 
um, that it's going to have a generational impact on our families and continue to grow, grow the sport in Frisco. Um, from an economic development impact, um, we currently have over $2 billion of commercial activity that is being built to be prepared for the World Cup. Um, the city of Frisco is investing over nearly $100 million into our historic downtown because we want to show it off in 2026 for the World Cup. That's the kind of impact um, as a region that hosting the World Cup can have, where it's leading to billions of dollars of economic impact just in Frisco, not to mention what's happening in my colleagues' communities. Councilwoman Hill. Um, on behalf of the city of Fort Worth and as a member of the Fort Worth Sports Commission, um, this is a thrill for us. This is an opportunity for the city of Fort Worth to show off true Texan hospitality. Um, everything from the stockyards to downtown to our cultural district, we look forward to welcoming um, a global community to North Texas. And I think as they mentioned, um, it's been a team effort and we are so proud to, to be alongside these cities um, to host nine games and that's a tremendous, um, it will be a tremendous impact on our city. As y'all have mentioned, uh, the economic impact, uh, yeah, there's gonna be thousands of jobs, hundreds of millions of economic impact dollars going into um, North Texas and we look forward to be a part of it. Thank you, we will open it up to questions for Mayors Ross, Johnson, Cheney and Councilwoman Hill. If there are any questions, we have uh, Nui and Mack right over here on the right. I think, Nui, you were up first. Please just stand up, identify yourself. To whom you're addressing the question, all the things. Mayor Ross, Nui Scruggs, NBC5. Do you think public transportation, Arlington not having it at all, could have been a part of not having the final here? Nui, why not know somebody's gonna ask that question? We have public transportation. Let me tell you, if you've ever been to a Cowboy game, if you've been to a Ranger game, if you've been to the World Series parade where we had 750,000 people come into this city, they moved in and out just fine. We have a ride share program that gets people around just fine, but just because we don't assign ourselves to a particular transit authority at this particular moment, people think we're gonna, is that gonna be a problem? Absolutely not. We have been working hand in hand with Michael Morris and RTC and COG and planning all the transportation moving in and out of this city on a regular basis. So it worries me not one bit. This is the type of thing that Arlington was born and raised to do. We do this all the time. We've done Super Bowls. We've done three Taylor Swift concerts in a row. <laughs> That's almost as big as a World Cup now. Uh, this is something that happens on a regular basis. Our traffic management people are second to none. And if you've ever experienced coming in and out of here, we get people in and out as good, if not better, than any other city in the country. So uh, we do have a public transportation system. We're just not assigned to a, a transit authority. But I knew that question was coming, Nui. Thank you for getting it right out. Shoot. We'll go to Mac now. Uh, Mac Engel, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Nui stole my question, but uh, I do want to ask this. Given the fact there have been so many reports for the better part of a year that Arlington and Dallas and Fort Worth were going to get the finals, and to not get that, the disappointment here feels kind of tangible. Did you all believe those reports that we were, that this city was going to get the finals? Are you asking any particular? <laughs> I, I knew it was up in the air. Uh, FIFA has been very good about keeping things close to their chest and not getting the word out uh, prematurely. There was a leak out that uh, we were going to be the final game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, I contacted Monica Paul. She was directly in touch with FIFA. We knew that that was just a rumor. There, uh, we had no proof of any of that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we all wanted the final game. Uh, uh, instead, we got nine of them, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with that, and a semi. So I, I think the world will see what North Texas is made of. Last question for our mayors right over here. The last question. Mayor Ross. Uh, Can you identify Isaac, yourself, please? Yes, Isaac Appel with the Shorthorn. I noticed that you and the mayors and the councilwoman are sitting in front of a sign that says 26 Dallas, but all nine games will be played in Arlington. 
now that we know how many games there will be, how will you and city officials work to build up Arlington's global reputation as well as Dallas and Fort Worth? You know, let, let me just say this. The better Dallas reputation is, the better it affects Arlington. The better Fort Worth is, the better we do. The better Frisco is, the better we do. The better Arlington does, the better they do. I jokingly, uh, Mayor Cheney and I uh, did a panel together, I don't know, a couple of years ago, Jeff, wasn't it? And they said, well, introduce yourself and tell something you're proud of. And I said, well, I'm Jim Ross, mayor of Arlington. I'm proud that we don't allow the F word to be used in Arlington. And the F word's Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> because they do so many things really, really well. And I meant that as a compliment. And, and, uh, but that's how I feel about that. Listen, Dallas is the biggest city in North Texas. It makes logical sense to call it the Dallas World Cup. It doesn't phase me. It doesn't bother me. I don't care. I know they're being played here, but we have teams that are playing in Frisco. We have teams that are playing in Fort Worth. We have teams that are playing in Dallas and teams that are playing in Arlington. And when those games go on, we all do better. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that Eric Johnson City Dallas is named here and they're all coming here and they're playing in Arlington, but they're staying and practicing and going, they're staying all over North Texas. So we're all gonna get the benefit of it. Um, and, uh, and we're good with that. All right. Mayor Ross, Mayor Johnson, Mayor Cheney, Councilwoman Hill, thank you so much and congratulations again. As they exit. Y'all hey, didn't clap for us. <laughs> to all those players. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. So, Oz, we. Okay. They, um, they really want everybody to clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's, it, 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 you said it. It's, it's a little testy. It's, it's a, a little, little testy in there. Everybody's a little. And listen, I don't blame him for being frustrated. Yeah. You heard it from Jim Ross, the, the mayor of Arlington there. He was the gentleman that was all the way down on the left. Um, he said it was you know, just a rumor mm -hmm. that it was going to be at AT&T Stadium. And very clearly, he's right. It was just a rumor. Um, but it was a rumor that was out there and then out there again and then the out there again. And, and then this morning. <laughs> like, I mean, this, this was this – was, this felt like a lot more than a rumor. This felt like it was a foregone conclusion. Yeah. And I got to imagine on some level, even for them, even he's saying, hey, I reached out to Monica Paul, and she's saying, hey, it's still not decided. You know, mm -hmm. It's not done. It's not done. We reached out multiple times to the Stephen Joneses of the world and whatnot, yeah. and hey, it's not done. It's not done. Okay. And, and clearly all of that was correct. <laughs> I think th there's a reason why you never saw... WFAA report it's going to be at at and Stadium because we were never able to confirm it. Yeah. Clearly, there's a good reason why we were never able to confirm it because it was never actually confirmable. Um, but when it gets reported this many times, it kind of feels like, okay, this there's is... There's something there. The, the, when it gets multiple, multiple times by ESPN and, and another time by The Sun, a major yeah. publication overseas that covers soccer, you know certainly more in depth than we do here at Channel 8. Um, it felt like, okay, this, this is happening. And for it to not, it does feel like the carpet was just ripped out from underneath. Sort of, yeah. All four of those, those folks that were just standing there on, on, the, uh, on the dais a moment ago, I, I don't know how you, do, that's why I say I don't blame them. If, they're, if yeah. they're a little testy, if they're a little frustrated, if they're a little, hey, why aren't you clapping for us? I don't blame you for being frustrated right now because yeah. This felt like it was done. This yeah. felt like this was we we're, we're oh Jerry, Jerry Jones. Jones is speaking now. Let's see what he has to say about all of this. Now this was a fabulous come from behind effort. Tremendous effort by led by the two people on each side of me right here. But a fabulous. See the competition was dealing with the perception of a uh, 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 coastal of, of a New York or a Los Angeles. If this were totally being played to just America and the United States, that wouldn't have been such a formidable thing to overcome. 
but internationally, that's formidable to overcome. This team came that close to overcoming it. Now, we have nine games, and that comes out too fast. Too fast. When you say that, it ought to be nine games, because <laughs> that's the kind of impact that it will, will have here. We will, as far as anything we can do in uh, our organization or as far as our venue is concerned, we will act like that it's the final game. In every game, we will act like it's the final game because we want to show them. And we want to show them not only what this area is about, but we want to show them why this stadium is here to begin with. This stadium could have been built for a lot less and a lot grander scale just for the Cowboys to play in because you could have had a great place for 100,000 people to watch the Cowboy games every game. The rest of what was committed and why this stadium is here like it is is so that John Madden and Al Michaels can talk to 30 million and 40 million people and talk to them about what it's like to be in this stadium, not just the 100,000 that are in the stands. So while we want to really, really emphasize what we're going to do to the throngs of people that will come for these nine games, and we're going to do it upright, We'll assure you that we will take each one of these games and we'll use every ounce of anything the Cowboys are about, anything uh, the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area is, North Texas is about, everything Texas is about. What we had to sell was we believe that we represent in the center of the country what America is about in our way. And we believe we show the future. And we tried to sell that, and we wanted the committee of, the, of, of them to buy into that as opposed to going to one of the other coast of New York or Los Angeles. It was a hell of a battle. We almost got there. But I don't want in any way, from my perspective, to take away from how hard we're going to work to make each one of these games notable beyond any other uh, contests that that we have. So with that, I'm, I'm uh, going to be through. Uh, uh, there's a lot in me that because we didn't get the final compels me to talk about what an unbelievable job was done to get us to the point to where we're sitting here thinking, well, we're disappointed, and we are. But don't question about that. But only to the extent that that is a standing of today, not about what we're going to be doing for these nine games. Thank you, Jerry. Monica, you've, you've brought so many people together to get us to this, to this point. What's your reaction? Well, uh, you know, of course, I'd love to be standing up here saying we're hosting the final, but honestly, uh, I, I think in all of our projections, we never had nine matches uh, that, we, that we were looking at. So to know that we're the only city and the only region that are, that are hosting nine matches, and Honestly, I think at the be to know that DFW, Dallas, North Texas, our entire region was in the conversation from the beginning that we were considered for, for a final um, has a lot to say because we are putting our, our city, our region, uh, all of our partners on a, on a global stage. And at the end of the day, that's a big win in itself. And there's no doubt um, with the the people who have put their blood, sweat, and tears into this bid, the partners that we have with uh, the Cowboys and AT&T uh, Stadium and the Jones family and, and Dan and FC Dallas, and I mean, I could go on and on uh, of the people that have uh, worked on this bid to get us to this point. Um, it, it's just a big win altogether. All and uh, I look at this match announcement today as the last puzzle piece of the border of a puzzle, and we've got a lot to fill in. And that's where we're going to start tomorrow, is uh, working to fill in those gaps and uh, ensuring that we're putting on the best World Cup ever. Dan. Yeah, obviously I have a very long perspective on this. And I go back to 1994, getting the quarterfinal here in Dallas. And it was really kind of a shock that Dallas wound up with a quarterfinal 
and you fast forward to the, today, and we were in the conversation to host the World Cup final, and it was an incredible honor um, to even be on that stage and have that opportunity. And I'm so proud of our partners here. Our friendship with the Jones family goes back a long time, and they've been fantastic. Monica Paul and her, her team, and I know you saw mayors from four different areas here earlier, and that was, you know, this has brought our community together. But I want you guys to think about this. Out of nine games, we have four elimination round games. And I'm going to have to go look at the table, but I'm not sure anybody else has four elimination round games. And we have a final match on the last group stage elimination day. So you have five fixtures that are do or die that are going to happen at this magnificent theater. There will be more drama that takes place here on this pitch than anywhere else in the entire World Cup bid. You have five do or die matches and you're going to have nine great matches that take place because i know how they do things here at at&t stadium with our great partners the joneses and the nfl but <clears throat> you will see things and you will see drama unfold that probably will have never been witnessed in any other world cup in a single venue except here at at&t stadium so incredible win for soccer fans uh, soccer fans in North Texas, you're going to have an opportunity to come here. And if you think about the amount of visitors, nine matches, the economic impact, this is like nine Super Bowls um, that we're going to get right here in our backyard. And it's going to do nothing but grow the global game, grow the game here, and grow our city to an even larger stature on a global basis. And we all get to be part of this. So this is a dream come true. And I am so proud of the effort. But I am excited for the drama that we are all going to get to witness here on the pitch. Thank you. Now we'll open it up to questions. Again, we do have Kaylee over here, Priscilla on the left, if you wouldn't mind identifying yourself and to whom you're addressing the question. As it relates to this group, let's keep it focused on soccer, please, and, and the news of the today and nothing else related to other areas of business people may be involved in up here. So with that, we'll go ahead to Meredith. Hi, my name's Meredith Yeomans with NBC5. Congratulations on getting the nine games. I was wondering, were you given any indication about why we did not get the final? And if not, will you get an opportunity to speak with FIFA officials about why that didn't happen and why it didn't go our way? Are you addressing Monica, that? Monica, I guess. Repeat our question. Why, did FIFA give you any indication as to why Dallas did not get a final? And will you speak to FIFA? And they asked for Monica first, but Jerry, please feel free to weigh in. Uh, no, we, we did not get a heads up in terms of how many matches or if we were getting a final. Uh, we learned uh, with the general public. Uh, I would anticipate that we will have some follow-up questions and, you know, just like to give some insight because it only makes us uh, better and stronger moving forward for any events that we look to host. Would you like to weigh in, Jerry? Uh, no, I uh, uh, had visited with key people as well as with other people in our organization. And uh, uh, from that standpoint, knew uh, just as you knew uh, where we were going to be. And uh, uh, I, w I do want to make this point. There will be not one difference in how we prepare and what we do with our venue and what we do with soccer and what we do with uh, the fans that v visit here and how this thing is presented, there won't be any difference in if we'd have had the final game or not. Uh, and it's because of the fact we're getting all of the games that we're getting and the uh, uh, substance of those, uh, uh, of those games. All right, we'll go over here to the right, right over here to Nui, I believe. Nui Scruggs, NBC Dallas. Question one for Jerry and then one for Dan. For Jerry, uh, on the business of soccer is legends hospitality the official uh world cup uh, provider and for you dan how will fc dallas's facilities be used during this time for nine matches well uh i think that uh, the the thing that we are going to bring to the table is uh cutting edge hospitality and we do that and so uh, it was going to be a challenge. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, when I was visiting with the key people this past week, I said, don't you give us this final. We're going to take it up the flagpole if you do, in terms of hospitality and in terms of how it's presented relative to uh, the national and international audience. 
And um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I just will tell you this. Uh, this is a triumph. This is a huge, huge success for every entity concerned here. And uh, while it's easy to sit here and say, you came in second, uh, the real world is seconds here are magnificent. And that's not an exaggeration. Again, uh, that remains to be seen, and that has different parts to it. Uh, the fact that we're having the games here to begin with, Legends is here and runs his stadium, so uh, Legends will be very involved in uh, these nine games, and uh, many of these venues across the country, uh, Legends has been very active in uh, the building of them, uh, the selling of the uh, seats and the suites, uh, so 60% of the venues uh, uh, Legends has uh, been involved in. Yeah. And then Dan. Yeah, <clears throat> Nui, thanks for your question. And again, the benefit of ha having nine matches is now we believe that there will be more visiting national teams that pick the Metroplex as their home training center with the probability of having matches here or having elimination round matches. But what we're waiting on is for the referee headquarters to be designated. Um, if we are so fortunate to have it at Toyota Stadium, then it's my belief that we would only have one visiting national team. I believe if we don't have that, we could have two visiting national teams pick Toyota Stadium. But the Metroplex is ripe to have many visiting national teams pick this entire area and use facilities like MoneyGram, Toyota Stadium and, so and Soccer Center, SMU we've talked about, UTD, there, there's been a litany of them. I would sure like for Fort Worth to have an opportunity to participate in this also. But we're waiting on the International Broadcast Center um, in that announcement. Uh, and hopefully that will also be coming in the coming weeks. And then, you know, they will eventually uh, make the decision on hospitality, too. That's another uh, decision coming up that, that Jerry was talking about. And I know Legends has, you know, put in a, a great bid on it. And so I, I think there are so many things coming to the Metroplex, and we're in that final running. This really could still be the epicenter of the World Cup. Um, you know, obviously people talk about finals, but semifinals are legendary matches. Having nine, having the opportunity to have all these national teams, all of these visitors, international broadcast center, referee headquarters, it just kind of goes on and on and on. Um, our legacy of this 2026 World Cup will, will last not generations, but I think for, for much further than that. We're gonna go straight back to the center. Jeff Kolb with Fox 4. For all three of you, how confident did you feel about your chances to get the final match and what gave you the most confidence in your bid? And then for Dan, what would your father think of this moment? Yeah, so <clears throat> look, I know this for a fact because, and FIFA was very guarded. There was no inside information. Um, they ran a very quiet process. I know we checked every box and put forth the best bid that we possibly could. Um, so I'm really proud of the efforts that everyone has done here um, across all the different cities involved in all the communities. Uh, you know, my father was, he loved this game and his story in the game of soccer is not like anybody else's. He didn't grow up when, in a time when soccer was being played. He fell in love with it for different reasons and his final push to get him over the hump was the 66 World Cup final. In 67, he decided that his hometown of Dallas, and I see Kenny Cooper out here, was uh, ready for professional soccer with the Dallas Tornado. And we always kid that he was about 40 or 50 years early, but that was the legacy of the World Cup. The 94 legacy was Major League Soccer, and Kenny Cooper Jr. is around here too. I saw, saw him. Can we all imagine what the legacy of the 2026 World Cup is gonna be if those two other pivot points are what created soccer to what it is today? I think he would be thrilled. My dad always loved the underdog. He, he viewed soccer as a little bit of an underdog story in this country. Um, but soccer is no longer the underdog here. And I think people always ask me what my biggest hope is for it. My biggest hope is that coming on the heels of the 2026 World Cup, we influence young men and young women to be the next, you know, Lionel Messi, the next Pelé, the next Mia Hamm, um, and the next Abby Wambach. We 
whatever comes of that, they, we produce the next global superstars. It's going to happen here in the United States. It will. It's only a matter of time. And I think the 2026 moment will be the one that spurs more young people to play the game we all love so much. The FIFA team led by Gianni is, uh, uh, in, in my experience in sports, is uh, one of the most professional, one of the most competent teams uh, of any, whether it be networks or whether it be uh, the NFL, they're one of the most competent. And uh, I'm confident uh, that they were totally sold, completely sold, on what, our, what we were offering. And again, I knew personally from the very beginning uh, because of the international viewpoint and the uh, perception that uh, uh, New York was formidable competition. One thing. Yeah, I, I would say, say uh, going into it, I was uh, probably 50-50. Um, but you have to keep in mind that uh, this is my job on a regular basis. I think this is, the be this is the best region in the whole entire country. I think this is the best stadium uh, in the whole entire world. Um, I know we have the infrastructure. I know we have the hotels. I know we're centrally located. I know we have the, the corporate support, the community and, and city support. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we were talking about earlier that this is a regional uh, effort and more than ever it's going to take all of our cities, all, all this entire region to come together because the entire world's um, eyes are going to be on us. So did I, did I think, uh, and very much like Jerry said, that uh, the, the perception of, of going up against a New York, New Jersey um, was something that we, we weren't sure we were going to be able to combat, but at the end of the day, we're now in that uh, discussion, uh, and the whole world, uh, it, you know, Dallas, uh, DFW, Arlington, North Texas, has been in that discussion here over the past, to a certain degree, maybe seven years, because that's how long this bid has been going on. And at the end of the day, th that's, a, that's a big win. But make no mistake, <laughs> hosting a World Cup uh, semifinal is also a big, big win, and, and knowing that we've got nine matches, and we're going to be welcoming visitors from across the world uh, and be able to share our great region with them and hope that they come back many times over. So we have a question back here in the back, right over here, and then we'll go over to Skylar. Questions for Monica. Monica Clayton Neville with KLIF WBAP. So now that we know nine games, is there an expected economic impact with nine games and what could the International Broadcast Center add to that? Yeah, so uh, we, we had not done a forecast for nine matches, I'm going to be honest. Uh, and so w we will engage our economist um, and do a lot of research uh, here over the next month, two months. Uh, they know that it's coming once this match schedule is the last critical piece. Uh, and we'll have some updated figures from an economic standpoint, from a just overall uh, uh, expense standpoint that will that we'll be you know, able to share and ha be able to pinpoint and have, have a, a, a good figure. I know there's some numbers that are out there that uh, were based on a study that were done, oh, probably seven, six, seven years ago, um, and truly probably more so off of four or five matches, and now we have nine. So I'm not going to say they're doubling or anything like that at this point. We need the time uh, to be able to do this right and uh, uh, do the research on our side. Thanks, Clayton. I think we're going to stick back here in the back. Skyler, I think that's Skyler. Skyler Dixon with the AP. I'm not sure which of the three of you is best for this, but could you walk us through some of the logistics of field installation, the cost, who pays for it? Will you lose any permanent seats? The quick turnaround back to an NFL season when it's all over. Jerry. I okay, think I, I think probably I'm the best, but uh, uh, it's one of those open-ended numbers. And so uh, uh, the we're going to do what it takes to get it done. And as I, of my own volition, mentioned a minute ago, we're going to do the same thing with the pitch and going to do exactly the same thing that we would have done with this stadium uh, had we had the last ball game. So um, uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, 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 we're prepared to do it. It's many millions of dollars, and I know that uh, is not a good number to hang your hat on, but I don't know exactly what the final bill will be. 
by the time we uh, get it done. Uh, it seems like sports is a lot like that. <laughs> you don't know what the end amount is. But uh, having said that, uh, uh, I just can't emphasize enough, uh, this is easily the most significant sports event that has taken place uh, in our uh, region in North Texas. Easily, going in a way, the most easily. What is important is that this area, our area, and our mentality and the interest there is in just sports in general, but certainly the enthusiasm for soccer, we will take it to a level that the infrastructure and the uh, criteria they used, they didn't anticipate. Uh, I've done that in sport and I know how it works and I know what this area can do and we will take it to another level. And when they're through with it, but showing it nationally and internationally, it'll be at another level. And so uh, I'd like to have added the final game to it, but we're gonna make it go up the flagpole. All right, it looks like there are no more questions for Dan, Jerry, or Monica. Last call. All righty, congratulations again. This is truly, Thanks. truly a moment to celebrate the accomplishment of this milestone. And uh, even though we've gotten to this point, we can pause for a few more photos. We know that our work really has just begun. All right, we welcome yeah. you back into the newsroom here at WFAA. It looks like anyway they have wrapped up for good now there at AT&T Stadium. Um, Jerry Jones tried to, uh, honestly, Jerry Jones I think may have been the most honestly disappointed Pointed, of yeah. anybody that we've heard to this point. Yeah. Um, he's probably the most seasoned of all of them at coming out and talking after a loss, so it, it fits that he was uh, <laughs> adept at that. Yeah. Um, Listen, it, there is there's a lot of disappointment in that room. Yeah. Uh, they they did. I mean, Jerry said this team came this close. He said it was a hell of a battle. We almost got there, but did admit. Listen, they're they're disappointed. They they did come up just shy of their goal of getting the World Cup final to AT and T Stadium again. They will have the semifinal. They will have nine matches in total. Mm -hmm. Two round of 32 matches. Uh, two round of six. Uh, a round of 16 match. The semifinal, mm -hmm. and then the five uh, group stage matches as well. Dan Hunt getting into. Um, the fact that there won't be any more drama yeah. anywhere else across the country, across the continent, over the course of that month and a half or so of the World Cup, because five of those nine fixtures will be matches where it's do or die. The final of the five group stage matches, somebody's going home after that. Yeah. And then you've got, of course, the four knockout stage matches. Nobody's got more knockout stage matches nope. than DFW has, than Arlington has. Um, there was a question directed to the Arlington mayor about when are you going to put Arlington on the signage instead of Dallas. Just my two cents. We make way too much out of that. <laughs> it, no, I don't I'm think, with you. I don't think anybody in Foxborough, Massachusetts is saying, why are we calling it Boston? Yeah. Because it's the Boston area. It just it, it is what it is. It's the Dallas area. It's the DFW area. Whatever you want to call it. It's not a slight against Arlington or Frisco or anybody else to call it that. Um, as as even the Arlington mayor said, Dallas is the biggest city in this area. It's we make way too big a deal out of that. But anyway, um, we're getting Matt set up for a live hit. Okay. All right. Very good. We so we will go back out to uh, AT and T Stadium here momentarily. Matt Houston is standing by as well. Just your reaction to. Their reaction, as we've heard now for the last probably hour or so, uh, yeah. creeping up on an hour since the announcement came down, reaction from Emmett Smith and Dirk Nowitzki and Marty Turco and, and Paxton Pomacall, reaction from Jerry yeah. Jones, reaction from Monica Paul. Dan Hunt. Uh, I mean, it's it, Monica Paul was interesting to me, talking mm -hmm. about it, it, they're really trying to play up, hey, nine matches, which is huge. Massive. And even she said, listen, we, we didn't even they didn't conceptualize yeah. the idea that they could get nine matches. So that is a huge, huge feather in their cap. And that is now, as she said, it's kind of the border of their puzzle. Mm -hmm. And now they got to start Fill filling pieces, in all yeah. of those puzzle pieces. Um, it, there, there's a lot of work still to be done, all the work they've done to get to this point. Now they actually have to put the show on over yeah. the course of the next two and a half years. Um, but w what was your big takeaway from, from all of this? Just the reaction from it, like everyone just looks so dejected to me, you know, mm -hmm. like it's no, you, know, you can see it on their faces. I mean, they're saying all the right things. We got nine matches. 
Um, Dan Hunt said it's Dan, a dream come it's true. It's a dream come true. You know, it's a dream come almost true. It, yeah, and so I mean, I'm sure they they are they're going to very much play up the fact that they have the most matches, they have the most uh, knockout uh, knockout stage games. Um, I found it interesting um, from the perspective of Dan because um, he's he, I think he's probably the most ingratiated into this culture as as anybody mm-hmm. with his dad um, being heading the the Dallas bid committee in 1994. Um, but how we mentioned in 94, it kind of birthed the MLS. MLS became a thing in, in the United States um, because of the 1994 World Cup. And his, uh, he mentioned how um, he wants to see this World Cup um, influence the, the next generation of, of uh, kids coming up. And, you know, will we see an Abby Wambach, a Lionel Messi, a, someone of that stature to come up from America in, in the soccer world. Mm-hmm. And I think that, I mean, I think he's onto something there. You know, that's, it's going to be a massive deal. It's the biggest uh, World Cup that has ever been um, done in history. So, I mean, the most games, most countries, um, and just the, the impact that it's going to have on the culture of soccer in America mm-hmm. and economically. And that, that's, that was my biggest takeaway is just mm-hmm. how invested he is in, in that aspect of, of bringing it here. Monica Paul was asked if they had gotten any sort of heads up from FIFA, if they had been told, hey, why wasn't, she said, no. why did it no end up this way? And, and f- I feel like if you're watching us at this point, uh, over two hours in, first of all, God bless you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> second of all, if you're still watching at this point, you probably know who Monica Paul is, but just for those who may not be initiated, president of the Dallas Sports Commission, one of the real driving forces behind this effort, her, Dan Hunt, Jerry Jones, the Cowboys organization as a whole. There were a lot of hands in this, but she was one of the uh, most uh, primary hands in, in making all of this happen and in, in, in trying to convince Gianni Infantino and FIFA to bring the World Cup final here to North Texas. Um, she said they did not get any heads up, but she said they will have some follow up with FIFA. They mm-hmm. will have questions as to, all right, how did this happen? Why did this happen? There were questions about mass transit lobbed at the Arlington Mayor Jim Ross. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of factors in it. It feels like that might be the, the most likely factor. Um, the other thing here, I mean, it's a World Cup on U.S. soil, yep. on North American soil, the biggest, most well-known city on North American soul, soil, arguably the biggest, most well-known city on the planet, is New York City. Yeah, That's also probably a factor here, too. Definitely. You know, the, the, I mean, it's, it's not just, oh, they've got mass transit, you don't, sorry. Like, I, don't, yeah. I don't think it was just that simple, but it probably was a factor. I definitely am. So... Um I'm kind of curious that like, going back to the whole like Arlington business of it all, um, I'm, I'm curious to see what they come up with in terms of the economic impact. Because she said that they have no idea. Mm. They weren't expecting nine matches. And so um, I just want to hear back because it's, it's going to take some time to research mm. and, and get those numbers out. But we've been saying that it's, you know, each match is equi- an economic equivalent to a Super Bowl. And so. Um, just how much money and, and exposure and everything is going to come to the Arlington area. It won't hurt to have nine of them, that is for Fair sure. Enough. Matt Houston has been at AT&T Stadium all afternoon. Matt, we can feel the disappointment coming through the <laughs> television screen, but take us inside. What, what has it been like for you to see the reaction to these moments and, and what the last hour and change has been like now? Well, Mike, as they made the announcement on the TV, it was almost as if the air came out of the room in a, in a sort of uh, kind of shocking way. I think a lot of people were both stunned to get as many games as uh, DFW will get and then also probably equally stunned to not also get the final here. Uh, case in point for that is really like eight words into the press conference, we heard the word disappointed. Uh, Dirk Nowitzki was the first one to talk. Uh, he came out and said, I know there are a lot of disappointed faces in the crowd. First sentence of this uh, sort of post-game press conference that we've had. And it really did feel like a post-game presser after a tough loss when you went down the line, Marty Turco, Emmett Smith, Dirk, and you're talking about you know, what it's like to sort of have this bittersweet moment to get something really good uh, in nine games, but then also to miss out on that, that final opportunity, that big one. Uh, it's a bit like a team losing in the Western Conference Finals or you know, the, the American League Finals or something like that. I mean, it's, it's hard to really quantify it. But yes, there was a palpable sense of disappointment in the room. And yet, you know, the folks who took the stage and fielded questions worked very hard not to let that overcome or overshadow the victories today because there certainly are some. 
We're going to talk a lot about the final, obviously, in the coming weeks and why DFW did not get that. I do want to point out, and I think you guys have talked about it already, but it's significant that Dallas and Fort Worth and Arlington will not host uh, group stage men's U.S. men's national team games. Uh, so you lose out on that opportunity there where you're getting a lot of sort of local U.S. travelers to come here. The other thing worth mentioning, and Mike, you basically just said it, uh, the perception of New York and Los Angeles, I believe Jerry Jones called it the coastal perception, and how that might be more appealing for an international audience uh, than Dallas-Fort Worth. They're more recognizable cities perhaps to someone watching from Italy or Spain or Ecuador. Uh, these are places that uh, are iconic American cities and I think Jerry Jones alluded to that as you guys just did as well uh, as perhaps that being one reason why Dallas-Fort Worth did not secure this but uh, lots to be happy about. You just heard Monica Paul say they haven't even run the numbers on what the potential economic impact could be. Uh, the last study she made reference to is almost seven years old at this point uh, and it deals with numbers that we know are probably going to be different, and it's somewhat assumed there would be five or six games, not nine. So lots to hang your hat on here if you're a, a member of you know any of these organizations that have uh, lobbied to get this game here. But yes, certainly a palpable disappointment in the room as uh, all of this happened. Guys? Matt Houston at AT&T Stadium. Matt, thank you. We appreciate it. Yep. He brings up the point about... Um, uh, I forget exactly how he phrased what Jerry said, but but coastal. Um, I was just waiting just for. Like a coastal I, was, bias. I was I was waiting for the next word to be elites. Uh, I thought that was where he was going with that, <laughs> but it it wasn't where he went. Yeah. Um, but I think that there is. I wonder in the aftermath of this, how much there is a feeling of because because yes. New York and LA, oh, yeah. or, you know, they're they're built up to be these these bookend cities that are the coastal elites, that are the the coastal. Um, um, I'm not sure what the what, what else would be the end of that sentence, honestly. Um, and there's a there's an innate competition. Yeah. There, there is a. I, mean, I see it on on social media all the time. Some of the comments that come in. Um, wanting to be or feeling that one is better than the other. Obviously, yeah. people from here in Texas feel like they've got it better than the folks in New York do or the folks in LA do, or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and it does kind of feel like a loss in, as Matt said, a Western Conference final or something yeah. like that, where you get that close and then you lose to, not that this would be the scenario with the way that the NBA <laughs> is structured, but you'll just lost to the Knicks in the, NBA, in the Western Conference or finals. Or the Lakers, you know. Uh, you lost to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. I mean, yeah. that, that's basically what just happened here. Yeah. And that, because it's New York, because it's, I mean, even even Emmett said it. I can't, we lost to Jersey? Like, yeah. I mean, that, that says it all. That, that, that is as much a, a sting as any piece of this. Yeah. It wasn't just that it was there for the taking and you got just that close. It's the... They got it's it. them. Those guys got it. Yeah. Like th that's that's part of it too. And I'm seeing that some of the YouTube comments are, are lighting up on that as well. So it's interesting that, that Matt brought that up too, because there is a, a an inherent there. bias and competition yeah. between the regions, between the cities, and uh, at least in this particular circumstance, New York, New Jersey ends up getting the the final, and, and DFW does not. And um, I, I've seen some of the, the tweets and the Facebook comments and the YouTube comments over the last hour or so. That yeah. that piece of it doesn't help. Yeah. So. so, But there are nine World Cup soccer games that coming, are coming here to DFW that are coming to AT&T Stadium. Nine of them, more than any other city, more than any other stadium. Yeah. Five of them, as Dan Hunt alluded to, will be do High or stakes. die soccer matches. Yeah. Four of them in the knockout round, two round of 32, a round of 16, and the semifinal. Here's the, uh, the full grid for you to get a look at. Dallas is the second lowest green city on your board. Uh, just the way that they break that down, that's mm -hmm. the central the region. region. Uh, you've got the East region at the bottom, and of course at the very bottom right is New York, New Jersey with that final match. Miami gets the third place match. That's the, the other one in that last column all the way down on the right. They get the third place match. That'll be on uh, July, is that the 20th, uh, the 18th, I'm sorry, July 19th is the final. July 18th will be the third place game. 
the semifinals, Dallas and, and Atlanta get the two semifinals. The Dallas semifinal will be on. You know what? I'm going to do this on my own computer and let you do it on your computer so that we stop competing yeah. with one another. Um, July 14th. July 14th. Thank you. Um, July 14th will be the Dallas semi. The Dallas semifinal. Um, that's obviously going to be the, the major game that everybody's going to want to focus on and is going to be the linchpin of this entire thing. Yeah. But the fact that there are nine of them, the fact that you can come to Dallas in a, in a whatever, three-week, four-week span between yeah. June the 14th in exactly a month, yeah. from June 14th to July 14th, you're going to see nine matches played in DFW. That's pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> none of them involving Team USA. Well, I should say, none of the group. It's entirely possible, the, yeah, theoretically, that any of the, the knockout, knockout stage, stage matches yeah. you could end up with the U.S. slated here at some point. Um, and I imagine, because the lobbying, I have to imagine, with FIFA is not done. Yeah, no. And now the conversation goes to Monica Paul and Jerry Jones and, and the power brokers at play here, Dan Hunt for sure. Now they, you know, the conversation continues along about, hey, where is the International Broadcast Center going to be? Mm -hmm. Hey, these knockout stage matches, we want one of our knockout stage matches. To be we've United got, States. We've got two round of 32. We got, we got two bites of the apple here yeah. to make sure you get Team USA for one of those. Maybe Mexico, you know. That, you know, so. it, Mexico obviously playing at this stadium on the regular Regularly. over the last several years. Um, th there are still things to be lobbied for, I have to imagine, yeah, between sure. now and, and uh, the summer of 2026. So this is, this is not done. And again, going back to Monica Paul's comment, this is just the border of the puzzle, and now they've got to fill those pieces in. And again, they're, they're probably not done with their lobbying. Uh, Jerry Jones talked about the field a little bit and mm -hmm. the modifications that they are going to have to make to the field. Um, he said it's an open-ended number, what it's going to cost. Yeah, kind of sounds like my budget personally. <laughs> I struggle with that myself. Um, there, it's, it's going to be a spendy, spendy process to be able to make that field be what it needs to be for World Cup level play. But he said, listen, we're going to spend every dollar we were going to spend on that if we thought we were going to get the final. Now that we're getting the semifinal and these other matches, they're mm -hmm. not going to spare any expense now. I mean, you, you talked about it earlier, what they've done for some of these other soccer matches that have been held at AT&T yeah. Stadium. Where, I mean, there's a, there's a picture where you can see uh, Messi putting his foot right through, yeah. basically down to the cement, and the, the grass just slides over four feet. Yeah. Um, they really need to make sure that doesn't happen yeah, you know, for, for World Cup matches. But uh, I can only imagine the import of this and the amount of money they're going to put into this, they're going to make certain that the field they put in in Arlington for these matches will be yeah. absolutely up to par. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they, they, it's hard not to circle back around to this sense of this, this air of disappointment, though, because yeah. it permeated through every one of those press conferences that we just aired for you guys. It was... And I know, Jay, you talked about, are we going to bring up the uh, the initial press conference with Dirk and with Emmett, and perhaps we can run that again just to give folks a chance to see that one more time. Yeah. It, Matt Houston alluded to it. Dirk used the word disappointment in, in maybe the second sentence of the entire press conference. Yeah. It, it, was, it was clear from the word go that this was, it's hey, this is place. really, really good. Yeah. But, and there's going to be that lingering but around this for two and Why a half I, years. Yeah, exactly. So... Do we, do we, I don't know if we have that ready. If we yeah, can cue that up it. one more time, I'll give you guys a chance to hear one more time from Dirk Nowitzki, Emmett Smith, Marty Turco, and uh, Paxton Pomichol from FC Dallas. Well, uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know there were some uh, disappointed faces uh, down there, um, but I, I'm thrilled. I mean, we, we have semifinals uh, of the biggest sporting event in the world, so um, I'm excited for, for this region, for, for North Texas. We're hosting nine games. Uh, we can show what a, what a great city, what a great region we are, how diverse we are. And uh, so I'm, it's going give, to uh, give a lot of opportunities to a lot of people in, in this area. So I'm, I'm excited. Uh, World Cup semifinal uh, will be an incredible atmosphere and in, in, you know, obviously state-of-the-art uh, facility here. So I'm uh, I'm I'm not too disappointed. I'm 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 thrilled. <laughs> um, I'm excited for 
the city and the region itself. Um, to be hosting nine games is pretty amazing, and to be hosting the semifinals is, is also a great thing in the context of winning. Um, but there is some disappointment here uh, because <laughs> I got to speak my mind. I cannot believe we lost the jersey. So, <laughs> so, but, but it happened. And so, but Dallas itself is positioned itself nicely. And I think over the last five to ten years, this, the, the city, the state, the region itself has done a lot of things to position ourselves for a global event like this. And we're poised to host something as, as big as this. And, and I think this, this region deserved to have something on a major, massive global stage uh, like this. And so kudos to all the mayors and everyone else that have put in tremendous amount of effort and uh, resources to make this city and this region suitable for an event like this. So uh, the, all is not lost because uh, this is a region of champions. Uh, uh, I mean, can't, I mean, we're talking about the Texas Rangers who won the World Series just recently. So it's not a lack of uh, effort. It's not by um, uh, because we don't have quality sports or quality fields or quality infrastructure. We have all those things, and uh, maybe maybe we get it on the next go around. It's great to be here, uh, representing a world class city, uh, Dallas in, in North Texas. Growing up in Canada, could never imagine this would would be home. Uh, and growing up a soccer football fan um, and playing it myself, the fact that the World Cup is coming back here um, is amazing. I think it's just a testament to um, what the city has become. And well before I ever got here t two decades plus ago, um, this, when you think of it, this is world class. And it's, it's, it's not an accident that we have nine games. Um, the infrastructure that we have, the vision, um, that our politicians, our sports leaders, uh, our business leaders in this community, and this effort spearheaded by Monica Paul to deliver an amazing uh, bid um, doesn't go unnoticed by a lot of people. And so nine games, a semifinal is absolutely amazing. And uh, I'm tickled pink about it and trying to take a step back. Of course, you know what Emmett uh, is saying about not getting the championship game. Yeah, of course it is disappointing because we know we do deserve it, but we also deserve these nine games. Yes. And it's gonna be amazing for uh, our region. And I think it's just gonna showcase all the class that we have uh, of our hotels, our airports, and all the infrastructure um, that has gone in and, and, and the future of where we are is gonna be showcased. So to me, that's what I think of. Um, as Emmett said too, this is, this is a championship city. We, we want championships. And we're going we're gonna to show everybody uh, why we deserve the absolute best. So I think of world class, and I think of where we're sitting right here at ATT Stadium. It is the best facility in the world. And um, we're going to have amazing uh, football matches here. So it's pretty exciting. And to be part of it, representing uh, sports in Dallas, is an absolute humble opportunity to do so. So uh, this is a great day for the city of Dallas and uh, for North Texas. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, Similar to what Dirk said, you know, just growing up in Dallas, how cool is it that we're hosting a semifinal of the biggest event uh, in the world? So I'm thrilled. Uh, hopefully I'll be attending. Um, hopefully U.S. is playing <laughs> and I'll be playing. But if not, hopefully I'll be attending. Um, like Dirk mentioned, the stadium's incredible. The city's incredible. All the effort that everybody's had to put in um, in the background that nobody sees. Um, nine games. It's, uh, it's a testament to, to the work that everybody's done in the city, um, from the mayors all the way down to, to the last, last person that worked on this thing. You guys, you guys crushed it, and we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for all, all of the effort you put in, and uh, we get to host the most games because of it. So pretty happy. Paxton Pomacall putting the finishing touches on that uh, initial press conference. Yeah. They had three different stages of this with uh, some some dignitaries from local teams, of course, that you just saw from with mayors from the area, as well as with the uh, kind of the leaders of this charge, Monica Paul, Jerry Jones, Dan Hunt. Um, I do think it's important to circle back to something Marty Turco mentioned, um, and that's that this is still a huge accomplishment. Definitely. There's... No question, an air of disappointment around this whole thing. That's going to be inextricable from this announcement because it just it, there was so much buildup around getting the final. But a semifinal 
there are a lot of cities that were contending for the final, that were contending for high-level matches. Miami, Boston, Kansas City, L.A., all would love to have a semifinal. L.A. Yeah. was in contention to get a final, final. didn't even get yeah. a semi. So. Dallas and Atlanta get your semifinals. New York City gets the final. There is still a ton of accomplishment here. Yeah. Getting nine games, the largest number of, of any city around uh, the entire continent. There is significant accomplishment in what yeah. Monica Paul and Dallas Sports Commission have done. Jerry Jones, the Cowboys, Dan Hunt. I mean, this is a... <laughs> it's a big club of people that have been pushing for this. Yeah. That again, they did come up just shy of their goal. Um, for once, a, 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 a something that Jerry said there toward the tail end of his press conference. Um, that in this circumstance, I forgot. I've lost where I wrote this down. But he said something along the lines of, "In this scenario, here we go. Coming in second here is magnificent." Yeah, definitely. That's actually true. Here. <laughs> yeah, this, for this sure. This isn't. Like, we were comparing it to losing to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. First of all, get to one. Um, <laughs> but it, this it, it's different from yeah. that in the fact that this is still a Massive seismic thing. accomplishment. Yeah. And it will be a standalone game. There will be no other World Cup game that day. It will be the only World Cup event on that, that day, day yeah. July 14th of 2026, all of the eyes of the sports world will be on AT&T Stadium. Stadium. I'm guessing, because we're two and a half years out, I'm guessing, but that's probably right in the heart of where you'd have the Major League Baseball All-Star break. There's going to be nothing else happening in sports. Besides that. Beside the World Cup yeah. semifinal at AT&T Stadium on July 14th of 2026. This is a seismic deal, and it is a huge accomplishment, no matter the disappointment that does kind of serve as an undercurrent here yeah it is interesting too like when you look at everyone in in our ecosystem is you know saying like oh we're disappointed to all this stuff but when you look at the poll that we have that's our national audience everyone's mm -hmm. like oh y'all should be content you know you you got the nine matches and that's that you're gonna get the most economic impact arguably i would say out of all the um different venues so I mean there is that to be had but I mean I want to uh, kind of just run through one more time just the fact that like you said there's going to be five matches out of the over half of their matches it's going to be a do or die situation mm -hmm. and so there's going to be high high drama um, the last group stage match there's what one two three four five group stage matches that day but all of them are going to be you need to beat this team to get into the next stage, or mm -hmm. you need to get a result to, to get to the next stage. Yeah. Um, and then from and then on out, it's, you know, you lose and you go home. And so um, the amount of hype around all these matches is good for them. Um, and then we don't know, obviously, that's one of the, I'm curious to see, we won't know this for years, but which of the uh, nations will be coming to play at at t Stadium. We do know um, that, uh, the United States is going to play in uh, the opening in SoFi, mm -hmm. and then they'll play at Lumen Field, and then they'll come back and play at SoFi to round out their group stage. All of Mexico's matches are in Mexico, um, so which makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then um, all of the honestly, AT and T would have been the only other place that really would, would have made sense. That, for yeah, Mexico. exactly. And so, and then they, uh, for Canada, they got a game in Toronto. They got a game, in Van and then they have a game in Vancouver, uh, two games in Vancouver. So like they're keeping their mm -hmm. um, team up there in their region, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the, and then the, I guess the next steps is just where's the broadcast center? Because that obviously brings in um, jobs and, mm -hmm. and everything and, and economic impact there as well. Um, Dan Hunt mentioned that that's uh, something that he really wants because he was around when uh, Dallas had the the broadcast center in 1994, mm -hmm. um, so that's something that they're they're going for the referee center as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there are other there are other things to to um, jockey for and everything. Um, but yeah, and so I, I'm I'm excited. We're gonna, that, we're, so that, we're gonna, that, that was going to be my final question for you. <laughs> I'm excited. Because you are again the foremost soccer expert that we have in this room. Yeah. Um, as well as I would argue the biggest soccer fan that we have in this room here at Channel 8. <laughs> yeah. um, we've heard the disappointment, the 
strained effort at excitement from a lot of people over yeah. the course of these press conferences. Where where are you emotionally right now? I mean, we, we saw the, the, the reaction yeah. from both of us is already yeah. out there on social media for you to enjoy as both of us, our jaws dropped. Yeah. But, but where are you now with, with uh, whatever, an hour and a half or so, almost yeah. an hour and a half worth of time to kind of process and, yeah. and really uh, make heads or tails of it? Where, where are you? For me, I, 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 I kind of sit where all of the the athletes that mentioned it. it's like i'm i'm a little bummed that you know the the, the final's not going to be here mm -hmm. um that would have been awesome um but as such a soccer fan like i'm the fact that we have so many matches like i'm i'm you know mm -hmm. super excited to get to cover this uh, continuously throughout uh, in the years to come um with all the different developments and so um i mean the fifa world cup is the it's the biggest sporting event in the world mm -hmm. and so um Having the, the biggest stage um, right here in our backyard is, you know, nothing to scoff at. So um, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait for it to – because we're going to blink, blink our eyes and it's going to be here. I mean, it just seems like just yesterday they were announcing the 16 host cities, but it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so and it'll be the same kind of thing. We'll blink our eyes and – but, oh, man, the, the World Cup is this summer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just – I'm super excited for this to actually come to fruition and – teams start coming here I'm really interested to hear where um, the base camps for United States and Mexico are but that hasn't come out yet I was kind of expecting it to um, I saw a tweet from Alexi Lawless that was kind of hinting that that was gonna um, be announced but I haven't seen that yet um, but I could certainly see Mexico's national team making base camp here in DFW um, it seems like the United States is gonna do it on the West Coast so that they're um, that would make sense that would make yeah. sense um, but and then, I mean, Dan Hunt talked about it. He's like, that they want to host as many different countries here as, as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he highlighted, like, uh, UTD is a, is a good spot. Toyota Stadium is a good spot. Um, you know, there, there are a, a myriad of places that you could, you know, have training grounds for mm -hmm. these, uh, these nations that are coming in. And so um, that'll be kind of what I'm looking forward to coming up. You'll know better than me on this, but I would imagine anyway that for a training ground, you don't need a World no. Cup size pitch. No, not at all. So we've got a few which, high level which stadiums is, around which North is Texas why it, that, you know. Dan Hunt had mentioned, like, there's high school stadiums that are, yeah. you know, good. The high school uh, football stadiums that are around North Texas, Texas, you know, could be. Plenty of venues that you could um, host. Yeah. I mean, you, you need a field, you know? And, so, and they uh, we've got have a few all. Of those. <laughs> They've had. They've always touted that um, Toyota stadiums, like they, they, their complex, their youth academy system, is the best in, in, in the United States. I mean, they have. I, I, there are upwards of sixteen training fields there out there. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a, the Toyota Stadium is a great spot mm -hmm. for something like that, where they can, you know, host all these different drills and host multiple countries. And so, uh, th there's nowhere better for, for that than than right here in North Texas. Yeah. Well. Two and a half hours later, um, shoot. We push, thought it was going to be push, 30 minutes. <laughs> pushing three. Um, quite a day and quite a surprise, but yeah. still, a, still a great day for, for DFW Sports. And, and again, Monica Paul, the, the Dallas Sports Commission, Dan Hunt, the, the folks that, that really put a lot of effort into making this happen. Um, there is cause for celebration today. Yeah. It's, it's not as full-throated a celebration as they would have wanted celebrating having the final here in Arlington as we thought was going to be the case but still nine matches coming to DFW it will be right there at AT&T mm -hmm. Stadium in, in uh, two and a half years time it is uh, it's going to be a heck of a summer in 2026 here in DFW yep. so thank you guys for tuning in we appreciate you for uh, giving us quite a bit of your <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Some of you that have been here probably the whole time. Some of you making comments that I'd rather still... not read on the air that uh, are rather yeah. reprehensible. Uh, but that's the nature of YouTube. Um, seriously, thank you guys for being yeah. here and uh, enjoy because there's a whole lot of soccer coming our way very soon.